You see? I even pulled out the old glasses that has started to stream. And everything's terribly orange. <laughs> anyway, um, yes, virtual ATC. We're going to learn enough to enable us all to do a flight with an online network, be it VATSIM, IVAO, Pilot Edge. That's where we want to start. And well, we know there's always a little bit of apprehension, a little bit of nervousness, uh, pressing the big red button and talking to ATC. Our mission is to get rid of that worry, disappear the mic fright, as it were, and put you guys on a sound, solid footing to be able to do your own online uh, network flights with ATC so that you're comfortable and you're confident to do so. It's going to take some time, but we have all the time in the world, you see? We've loads of time to do this. And uh, step by step, every single step along the way. So don't worry if you're brand new to this. Don't worry if you're a seasoned veteran. Well, you might worry, but we'll get there eventually. This is for all of us, the Fireflies and anyone else who wants to join in, who wants to come in with us. Let's learn something together. Now, a couple of caveats out the window. As you can see from the head of me, I am not any in any way a you know a professional aviator or real world instructor or instructor when it comes to aviation. I am an instructor by trade, uh, but not when it comes to aviation. It's a hobby. I'm an enthusiast. I love aviation uh, and everything to do with in, most importantly flight simulation. That's what I like to do, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. <laughs> right? So, um, <clears throat> what we're going to do, we're going to go to another screen here. Ah, yes, that's better. I better take off these stupid things as well. It's very orange. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. Yeah, baby. <laughs> now we're threatened. So this uh, course, initially we're going to start off flying in Ireland. So we're going to be following the EASA regulations, um, not necessarily that of the <laughs> FAA. Yeah. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I even said to myself, I'll put that alert there because it does, doesn't happen too often. You know what I mean? Other, like, you know, and now it's, you're like going bananas tonight. You're like nuts. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> we'll play a bit of background music. Do you know? So we have to start off at the beginning. I find that the best place to start from. And our mission tonight, <laughs> yeah. lesson number yeah, one. Baby. <laughs> yeah, baby. All we're going to do we're going to get ourselves to the stage that we can comfortably call up ATC and request a radio check. <laughs> yeah. A radio check. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Do we need to wish him or something? He's like, having too much fun. <laughs> Your man is... Ah, oh, Jesus. Um, right. So that's what we're going to do tonight. But we have a bit of a road to travel. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Before we get there. Right? Uh, now, don't worry. Everything we learn here, it is transferable over to the American rules of flight <laughs> yeah. uh, and we'll go through it step yeah, by step baby. right so yeah. I'm going to turn it off now in a second tonight what we're going to do it's getting started right <laughs> I'm loving the music I'm loving the emotes <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> where's the button if I just like mute them right hang on we'll wish them for a moment right <laughs> yeah, right, right. Anyway, so we're going to start off tonight uh, with our PC or Xbox hardware settings. That's right, friends. Um, because this is going to enable, for the first time, we think, Xbox pilots, or Xbox pilots, to experience a little bit of ATC until such a time uh, that the online networks make their way onto the platform. We're then going to have a look at the PC and Xbox software settings. Software settings, yes, yes, we need a bit of software to make the thing work and do the yoke, right? Uh, then we're going to have a look at some Discord settings. Tonight, our mission, we're just using Discord. Just using Discord, and uh, we have a number of channels set up, right? After that, we're going to have a look at VATSIM and the registration process. We're going to look at vPilot, which is a program that will run your audio through your PC into VATSIM and it'll play it back again. It's like this small bit of, it's the middleman, right? We need we need to have a look at that. Then we're going to have a chat about charts and access to charts. Charts are essentially your maps. How do you know where you're going? We're looking at a chart right now, behind well, it's there in front of you. Uh, charts, aviation charts. We can't do much without them. You can't fly online without them, regardless of what sort of like memory you have, right? So uh, we'll be chatting about charts. Where can you get them? 
Are they free? Do you have to pay for them? We'll find out together. Then we're going to have a look at weather. Where do we get our weather from? We need to know the weather forecast. And as much as we like tuning in to Met Air and, and looking at, you know, Jesus, what was your one's name? I forget her now. Um, you know what I mean? Instead, of, you know, rather than getting the weather, or Martin King from TV3, hello, stop the lights, you will. Instead of going into that road, where can we find out what the weather is doing, where we're flying, but also can we get some aviation specific weather? That's important to us when we go flying. Then we're going to have a look at flight planning. How do we plan? our flights, where do we plan our flights, and then it's over to call signs. What's a call sign? Well, you're given a name. Usually when you're born, someone names you. Do you know what I mean? They might take one look at your head and call them mallet head, uh, or you could have small hands and say gibbo. Uh, do you know what I mean? But they give you names. Aircraft have names, uh, an identifier, right? And in the world of general aviation, they tend to go by the aircraft registration number, you couldn't really do that with airlines because there would be many. How many Boeing 737s were built, for example? So they would use what's called the ICAO code uh, or a code for that airline. So we'll learn all about it and figure out what we need to do and how we're going to do it, right? So with that, well, you're all welcome in. Now over on our Discord, we have a Discord. I'll put some links into it here now in a moment. But on our Discord, we have down the left-hand side down here, uh, once you're in our Discord, you'll see where pilot ops or pilot operations live. And inside there, you'll see ATC text and ATC course. These are two important channels. The ATC text is a way to get information. So it's possible to get some weather. It's possible to see who's online. So we'll go through that later on. But the ATC course, uh, this is where I will be posting all the details that we need. So for this, I give a course overview, what we expect or what we hope to learn over the next about 10 weeks, I would think. The next 10 Mondays, give or take, right? So I'll give you a quick overview with a bit of, uh, bit of music. So tonight, voice communication or radio telephony. That's what we're going to be learning tonight. How does one speak? What do you mean, Alpha Bravo Zulu Tango Tango? What? Right, we, we need to learn these things. Then we're going to move on to charts, ATIS, flight plans, uncontrolled airports, and airspace. Then we progress onto our ground operations, which will include startup pushback and the differences in Europe versus the United States, taxiing, takeoff, landing, exiting the runway, taxiing back, and then going to parking or to a stand. We'll learn about all the stuff, right? If you're here and you're pressing buttons by following or subbing, thank you very, very much indeed. I paused the emotes because I didn't think this true. Level five, Jesus, I didn't think it through, right? And, and Austin Powers has gone bananas there in the background, right? But anyway, uh, I digress. Then we're going to move on to VFR. VFR stands for uh, Visual Flight Rules. When you start off as a student pilot uh, or pilot, you're going to start off with the Visual Flight Rules category. 90% of the time it's spent looking outside the window, hence visual, yeah? Visual Flight Rules. And with that, we'll look at the flight planning. We'll look at circuits or traffic patterns, departures, flight following or basic service. There is a difference. You get a basic service over this side of the pond. And if you're in the US, well, they call it flight following. There's some small differences between them. Then we're also going to look at filing a flight plan. And this is done online. We'll be filing our flight plans over to VATSIM. Or it could be IVAO, or it could be POSCON, or it could, it could be whatever it is you want, right? We'll work, we'll look at each and every network for you. Then we go on to IFR. IFR stands for Instrument Flight Rules. Instruments. 90% of your time, you're looking at your instruments, right? Uh, and that allows you to fly in all kinds of weather. There's no real restrictions when it comes to cloud or visibility outside because you're going by your instruments. Now, you need to be rated to fly by your instruments. It's known as your uh, IFR or instrument rating. And the aircraft have, has to be capable to fly uh, under the IFR regulations. Uh, so the likes of, say, a glider or... You know, what's that thing called? The A-something. There, there's certain aircraft that just, they, they wouldn't last five minutes, right? Anyway, when it comes to IFR, we'll go through flight planning. We'll go through clearances. We need clearance, Clarence. Departures, our en route details, descents, arrivals, and the whole shebang. Uh, then we have a look at non-normal and special operations. Ooh. And then, of course, we'll do a VATSIM and we'll do a Discord flight. The whole thing is going to build us up to our own event, We'll do it on VATSIM, and for our Xbox pilots or those who maybe just prefer to fly uh, with our own controllers on Discord, 
we'll arrange the whole lot. So that's going to be a couple of weeks away. Tonight, there's little or no flying, but we'll see what happens at the end. But certainly, as the weeks progress, there will be flying involved. We're going to spend a bit of time learning, writing stuff down, thinking about it, cracking a joke, and then we're going to try it for ourselves. All right? So the first thing I would highly recommend you guys have, just don't call me Shirley, I, just, I highly recommend that you have some sort, here's one I made earlier, and it's not covered in dust, if you have some sort of notebook, or a bit of paper, but something that you can keep this information handy, and a pen, right? You're going to need it. These are handy, right? Now, there's one thing that's included here, uh, and you'll see that it's noted down at the bottom. There are these documents, they're PDFs. I don't even know what PDF stands for. It's not an air, it's not an aviation abbreviation, but if it was, would you know what it is? Do you know what I mean? Uh, where is this now? If we go into here, I have prepared a little document, a little document, and uh, portable document format, PH Depot, Dr. Depot, the man's a genius, a genius, we say. Um, but anyway, this document here, I've scoured the internet, I've checked out Fatsim, I've looked, I've looked through kind of all the sources I can get my hands on, plus a little bit of real world experience, which is limited, granted. Uh, but the idea behind this is to give you guys enough information to get started and to be able to follow along. So if you were to, this document is free, it's on our Discord, go ahead and grab it, right? Please don't fall, we'll try not to. Um, you can click on any of these. This took a lot of time. So um, you can click on any of the headings and it'll bring you straight to that area. There's an introduction. It's about where I got my name and uh, who styles my eyebrows. Um, it doesn't. Uh, but then we go on. It just explains what the document is. Then we move on how to use the document. Why do we want to fly online? What are the online networks? So in this, I've listed Vatsim, IVAO, Pilot Edge, and then our own Discord, just to give you guys an idea. Then our connectivity. How do we actually get connected to use these networks? Uh, and I'm looking at vPilot here. We also have a Discord solution for our Xbox pilots. Then we go into our sim and sound settings and our model matching. And this is going to follow. Each week I'll update this and it'll follow what we're learning on the live stream. All right. Model matching. This is something that is handy. It's not a necessity, but I highly recommend it. If you go to fly on VATSIM, for example, that means you're going to leave the multiplayer stuff in Microsoft Flight Sim turned off. You don't need that at all, right? Um, so you want other aircraft to appear accurate. Hence, you'll be using model matching. VATSIM has its own engine that'll read a VMR file and it'll put the right aircraft with the right livery, hopefully, uh, within your vicinity. So you can actually see an Aer Lingus takeoff. You'll see, you know, a British Airways land. You'll see all of these aircraft, the livery and the aircraft model, or at least that's the hope. Uh, and we'll go through some of that as well. Next up, I have a whole load of references. The abbreviations. This list is not complete, um, but the idea behind this is if ATC or if your instruments are showing something and you're not quite sure what it is, for example, EET or perhaps ETE, right? Nothing to do with, you know, your man on the bike. Well, he wasn't in a bicycle. They wrapped him up in a basket, didn't they? But anyway, um, it just gives you, a, 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 what is it? So ETE, for example, estimated time en route. That'll appear on some of your avionics. For, and you're, well, what is ETE? Estimated time enough, right? So it explains all of these things. Uh, and on this document, on the bottom left of every page, there's a little link to contents and it'll bring you back up to the main menu. Look at that. Ah, where would you get it, right? So next up, we're going to learn about the phonetic alphabet or ABCs for pilots, right? This is hugely important because there are some similarities in the English language when it comes to some letters and numbers. For example, the letter N sounds a little bit like M, especially if you're on a radio frequency. For example, if I were to say uh, N, M, M, N, N, M, N, M, you wouldn't have a clue what I just said because it's what? Oh, what was he talking about? Right? Did that sound fancy, by the way? Can we get some sort of feedback? Did that make me voice sound like I'm in some sort of a cold fridge? Um, but the whole idea is we have to use the letters phonetically. N, November. And how do we say it? No, V, V, right? Isn't there a rapper by that name? Eminem, yeah, yeah. But, uh, see, Eminem, right? I met him before. He was, he was playing in Punchestown in County Kildare and he called it Dublin. 
And he got out, he was in a private helicopter and he was flying over Newcastle. If Sir Councillor is here, he was flying over Newcastle in County Dublin in a chopper. They landed at St. Finian's GAA pitch. He hopped out for the whiz and then got back into his chopper and continued on. And the lads down there playing football were like, who's that blondie haired fella taking a leak in our pitch, right? Anyway, I degra- how did we get on to that? Whizzing in a field. Uh, but anyway, you'll see that all the letters are broken down. In three categories, we have the Morse code. You've often he- often heard of Morse code. This button here. Right? You've all heard that before. The telephony, what it is, November, and then the pronunciation. No, them, er. Sound out with Murph, right? So this is all here for you, right? Now, does it, can anyone read this thing, by the way? If you have this document, can you read the message? Delta Oscar Yankee Oscar Uniform, Kilo November Oscar Whiskey, Whiskey Hotel Alpha Tango, India. Mike Echo Alpha Mike, question mark. Right? <laughs> have a read of it and see what you think. Right? Jay isn't Joey either. So sad. So sad. Then we move on to this lesson. Our lesson tonight, what we're going to do in practice, is a radio check. Yes, that's right. We're actually going to press the button. We're going to speak. We're going to be spoken back to. And then we're going to speak again. But the good news here is, lads, well, we have a script. Okay? For those of you who have challenges with looking at colours, the top bar is green. It says pilot. Yeah? That's you. You are the pilot. The blue bar, or ATC, that is for ATC. That's what I'll be saying. So, for example... We're going to tune into the ATC frequency, and when we're ready, we will transmit the following. So I will say, Shannon Ground, Echo India, Tango, Tango, Mike. And hopefully, just hopefully, Shannon will respond. Echo India, Tango, Tango, Mike, Shannon Ground. Pass your message. Jesus, he did it. And then I'll go back and I'll say, Echo India, Tango, Tango, Mike. Radio check, 121, decimal 8. See what happens here. And then hopefully... Echo India Tango Tango Mike, readability 5. And then I'll go back and I'll say, Jesus, this is brilliant. I'll say, <clears throat> readability 5 also, Echo India Tango Tango Mike. And that's it. That's all we have to do, right? The idea behind this, there is a readability scale. I'll often ask you guys, what's the audio and visual? And most people come back, you're reading 5 by 5 or, you know, 3 by 5 audio, visual. So give me a score on the audio between one and five and give me a score on the video or visual out of five. But this, they can't see us. Well, they can, but not on a camera. Right? They can't see us. So it's, a, uh, it's an audible scale or it's called the readability scale. It starts at one, which is either nothing, they can't hear you, or they'll respond to you, you're unreadable because you'll come across going, you know, it, it can, I can, oh, okay. what? Right? They can't hear you. Readability one. Readability two, you're readable every now and then, but you're not clear. Readability three, you're readable, but it's not as easy. It's it's quite difficult. Readability four, you're readable. And readability five, you're perfectly readable. We can hear you loud and clear. But this is the scale that they go with. And then the last thing to help build our confidence when it comes to any sort of uncertainty, if I say something and you haven't a clue what it is, well, you might just say, your man, what's, what's the story? Do you know? Or, if it is the case, you can't really say what's the story to ATC. If they speak to you or they give you an instruction and you just cannot understand it, well, the procedure is, you'll see it here, Shannon Tower, Echo India, Tango Tango Mike, say again. Or you might have to say, say again slowly. Because controllers are busy. They were like, right, Echo, t- Echo, Tango, Mike, how was your father? Quick, we need to go up there and we need to do this and we need to do the other. Right? This is the case. You ask, say again. You need, to, you need them to repeat. Now, you don't say repeat or what was that? Say again. There's going to be loads of this is what we do. This is what they do. I see ailerons are saying we just say five by five. That's perfectly fine. What we're going to do here, it's, it's typical Murphy. I'm going by the book. So if you go by the book, you can do what you like after that. It's like driving a car. Do you ever do your driving test? 10 to 2. You have to drive with the hands on the steering wheel at the 10 to 2 position. That's 10. That's 2. That's 10 to 2. A week after you get your driver's license, you're literally steering the car with your right foot as you're leaning back eating a burger. Do you know what I mean? So um, we'll learn it this way by the book and then you can do what you like after that. Once you get comfortable and confident, and it's the same with controllers, they're trained pretty much by the book in terms of 
uh, real world procedures. Those on Vatsim, those on Pilot Edge. I mean, they have to learn what the real world does. And then after a while, they get comfortable with it. They don't need to say, readability five, over. Not at all. They just say, yeah, five by five. Or, yeah, your grant. Or, you know, how's your sister? Does all that, right? Does all of that. So, are we, have we caught up so far? Any questions yet? I'll go into the chat now in a second, right? Uh, the, for clarity, the first number is signal strength. The second is readability, says Duster. It does, but again, this readability score or this readability thing, it's it's by the book. Like, it's in, where's my book? And I've many books, right? So it's based on your PPL. So it's your, it's your radio telephony book, right? So you're tested on this with your PPL. So we'll, we'll kind of stick with this. And this is the latest edition. This is like for 2022. So we'll stick by this. And if this fella's wrong, I'll send him a very strongly worded letter saying, Hi, you're wrong. Do you know what I mean? So we go by the book. At least, lads, if we go by the book, we have a point of reference. If I were to ask, where did you see someone write five by five? And is it five by five? Because by sounds like high or lie or, you know, tie huh? or I. Do you know what I mean? So if you refer to, well, I heard it from them or they say, I'd love to meet they or them because they are responsible for so many things uh, that I just can't get my head around, do you know? But anyway, I digress. We won't get caught up on the little bitty stuff, all right? Uh, they are the RAF. They. The RAF. Don't mind. Don't be minding that. Go get a job at the RAF, Duster. We have to go by what we have in terms of what's printed. That's the only thing I can make a reference to. But I'm not saying you're wrong. You're absolutely not wrong. What I'm saying is, We'll try it this way tonight, and let's see how we go from there. Is that fair enough? Maybe? No? Did you bring an apple? Right. So, as I said, this document is in our Discord for you. You can grab it. You can download it. There's also a printable version there. Uh, it's a second file, if you have a little look down. And uh, it just changes the font from, you know, being white on a black background to being black font on a white background, which means you can print it off uh, and do what you need to do. All right. Fair enough. Now, other couple of points. Once we get to this stage later on, I've added some voice channels into our Discord and you'll see them. They're all under this pilot ops area. Now, we have an ATC lounge. This is the holding or waiting room for pilots to have a nail chat amongst themselves. Break the ice. Hello, hello. That's all it is. We then have Shannon Ground, 1 to 1 decimal 8. And this is the ground frequency for Shannon. This channel will be used when calling up ATC for our radio checks. Fair enough. I have Shannon Tower, 118.7. We're not using that tonight. And then there is a support, 122.8. Now, 122.8 tends to be Unicom and everything else. It's just for tonight. The aim here, of course, is getting you guys used to listening to an instruction from ATC to change frequency or change your whatever audio channel. It's, it's repetition. That's all this is. All right. So with that said, we shall start at the very beginning and we're going to talk about hardware. Now, you might be saying, hardware? What sort of hardware do you need? Well, I highly recommend you have some sort of a headset with a built-in microphone. You can get them relatively cheap. Uh, you can have a standalone microphone and a headset, or you can just use speakers and a microphone, but that'll, that'll lead you to all sorts of background noises or echoes and all this jazz. You want to get yourself a headset. Um, you can pick them up on Amazon. They're as cheap as 15 bucks. And uh, again, if you're only using it for ATC, well, sure, that's that's what you need to do, right? So I have a whole load of pages here that we're going to go through now in a moment. Uh, your PC or Xbox hardware, you need a microphone and you need a headset. Ideally, you need a headset with a microphone. Does this have a microphone? This has an inbuilt, Jesus, look at that, happy to see us. This has an inbuilt microphone or on my setup here because I happen to be a streamer. That's a weird name. I have a microphone here on my desk. Right? So that's the hardware. You need hardware. A very simple look on Amazon, for example. Uh, don't mind the high price stuff. If you're on a budget, you can pick these things up for as little as 15 bucks. It's a headset and a microphone. And again, you can still have your SIM sounds running through your 7.1 surround sound system or your speakers or whatever. And you can just route your ATC through the headset and your microphone. It's really, really handy. Uh, and the software allows you to do all of these things. But you, you're going to need one of these. I highly, highly recommend it. A headset with an inbuilt microphone. All right? All right. So that's the hardware pretty much out of the way. You can't do much when it comes to configuring hardware. It, it's either on or it's not. There are other settings that we'll look at. Volumes, right? Uh, volume meters. And probably the most important, 
push to talk. Like the old walkie-talkies. If you wanted to talk to your mate Johnny up the road, you had to press a button. <laughs> right? It's the same crack. You need to have push to talk. Otherwise, it's known... Wait for it. It's known as a... <laughs> hot mic. But not that sort of a hot mic. What? Uh, it's, it's known as a hot mic. Which is basically, if I was sitting here now, could you imagine the conversation we'd be having with ATC, you know? Uh, Shannon Ground, November 225, from your mic, is clear of the airspace. Anyway, so I said to Nula, did you see the size of her? Do you, know? <laughs> you can't do that. So you have to be careful that you don't have a hot mic. You need to make sure that you press the button when it is you want to speak. We'll move on to that. That's the hardware. And here's the tip of the day, lads. Well, another one. Write this one down. When you're going to start to talk, the first thing you need to get your brain, what am I going to say? But the rule of thumb, literally, because you like to use your finger or your thumb, you press the button and wait for one second because there's nothing worse coming into a conversation like, Ango Ingo is about to take off. Wait, what did he say? Press it and give it about a second before you start talking. No more than a second, otherwise it's, it's background noise. But when you press the button, transmit, a second and then you start speaking. Right? Now we'll get into when is, go- when is a good time to speak, when is not a good time to speak. We'll get through all of that later on. But these are just, the, we'll call them the nuggets of information. Write down the nuggets. I'll be checking your note. Wait, hang on, that doesn't sound right. Uh, but that's what we're going to do, right? Now, Gibbo, I need to ask you, you know that message you sent me, you know, apart from the one saying the head in you, um, is that thing, have you a link that I can give to the folks so they can go over and grab that and then use that code? If it's ready tonight. If it's not ready tonight, we'll do it next week. There's no panic, right? There's no panic. Uh, anyway, we continue on. We continue on. So, uh, that's the hardware. Yeah. Oh, come on, Gibbo. Right. Now, your sound settings. This is of the highest importance. Your software settings. So, we're going to start off uh, with the Xbox pilots. Highly important because there's a number of Xbox pilots who have been kind of left behind a little bit as the sim progresses. Historically, flight simulators were always based on a PC, right? And then over the years, they became, you know, onto mobile. You have Infinite Flight and all these wonderful, brilliant gizmos. But the immersion isn't always there if you're playing on your phone and all of this. So historically, flight simulators tended to be PC based. That's changed now with Microsoft Flight Simulator. They've changed it completely because now the console pilots have access to the, all of these systems and all these aircraft. Uh, the only thing they're missing now is ATC. So our challenge or our thing that we're going to try is we'll try and bridge the gap to at least give a sense of that uh, environment to the Xbox pilots. I have a little video here I need you to look at. And uh, there's links for all of this. It's in the manual. It's a clickable link in that manual that I showed you. And basically, Gibbo is going to talk to us on how we're going to get our Xbox set up to work with Discord. Are you ready? Are you sure? Right, I'm going to turn this up full whack, right? Are you ready now? And I'm going to hide me for a second and then we see what happens, right? Joining a voice channel directly from your console is super easy. And with the latest update, there's now no longer a need to transfer the voice connection from your PC or your mobile first, as there was before. To link your Discord account on Xbox, just head into your console settings tab, go to the accounts page and into linked social accounts. Select the link option under Discord, and it'll take you right through the process to connect the accounts. You can sign in with your Discord account details, or as I've done here, use scan QR code. On the Discord app on your phone, go to the Profiles tab on the bottom right, then choose Scan QR Code. Once you scan, you'll get this message, Follow through the prompts to give the necessary permissions. And there we go. Finally, your Discord is linked. With your Discord account linked to your Xbox console, all you need to do is to open up the guide, scroll over to the Parties and Chats tab, then select Discord, and join a voice channel. From there, you'll see a list of all the available servers and voice channels, so all you need to do is decide where you want to go. I'll go for Tutor Murphy and ATC Lounge, but note the ATC channel name might be slightly different come launch of the ATC series in February.
And folks, that's it. And that's it for the Quick Fix series as we take a little break, but I'll be back again here soon with some other MSFS content that hopefully you might like. If you did like the video, you might please give the thumbs button a like and consider subscribing. And don't forget, your man at the start, yeah, him, he streams Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 2000 Zulu live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash 2 Murphy. What a shameless plug, but look at the jumper. Give out, it's only gorgeous. Did I ever tell you red brings out your eyes? Ah, Jesus. Go on the jumper, right? Anyway, that video, if it went a little bit fast for you, because I kind of just sprung it on you, you can replay it. It's on YouTube. The link is in that document that I have. And that's just to show the Xbox people, Xbox group, Xbox pilots, how to connect your Xbox to Discord, right? And by doing so, it then gives you access to our Discord. And this is it here. So the channels you're looking for, right, uh, they're down here. You'll see the ATC course. That's all the information is. Then you have the ATC lounge. And then we have all the other ATC channels that will change each week depending on what we're doing. So that's it. They're in, right? So uh, have we all followed so far? We have. We have. Grand. Now, staying with Discord, this is important. Hide my mush out of the way. There's a little settings clog or cog down at the bottom lads Do you see that here down the bottom don't get too close to the screen now but it, there click on this and what we want to do we want to go down to voice and video okay now with voice and video see the way this thing is moving up and down i have two microphones don't worry about that but your input and your output devices you need to make sure that these are set your input is your microphone and your output is your headphones or your speakers or whatever they are you can then do a mic test, testing a microphone, right? So if I were to click mic test, hello, hello Janie, Janie, look, look at the head it. Right? That's how you test it. And nine times out of 10, prior to going on a network, prior to jumping onto VATSIM, test your hardware on this screen using Discord, because that's that'll tell you in an instant, yes, my PC is detecting that I have a microphone plugged in. If you try and talk and nothing comes up, now you start delving into, oh, maybe there's a mute button, or maybe there's a this, or maybe there's a that. That's where you work about, or you worry about, right? I can send a pillow and baseball bat for the tin of stew. What? No, no. <laughs> now, next up, you'll see the input mode. This is highly important for our Discord users. Why this is important? This is where I spoke about a hot mic situation. You keep rambling about the weather and how Nula's bag of shopping was bigger today than it was yesterday. We don't need to know. So what you do on your input mode, change it to push to talk. And it's going to ask you, hey, I need a key bind for this. When it comes to the likes of vPilot, which is using FSU IPC for the PC guys, we can easily map a key uh, or a button on our hardware. It could be on your joystick, it could be on your throttle, it could even be on your headset. That's our push to talk. But for Discord on the Xbox guys, it could be a button, a number of buttons, you can set it up there yourselves. And when we're flying on PC uh, with Discord, record a key bind. A key bind is when I press this button, it'll transmit my voice. When I let go of that button, it stops. It is push to talk. So make sure that you're set to push to talk. That's important. Write that one down. Put a big star, exclamation mark. Be Janie beside it, right? That's important, right? After that, you can go into additional settings. You know, uh, the audio codecs are handy. It'll cancel out background noise. There's noise suppression there. You can mess around with these in your own time. If you guys are experiencing any problems, uh, as in if we can't hear you, if on the readability scale, you're at a two or you're at a three, well, chances are something in here isn't right. So we can share these and talk through them until your audio is where it needs to be. All right. The last bit of advice is when it comes to the distance from your speaking device or your mouth from the receiving device or the microphone, just be aware that you want to keep it as often as possible at the same distance away from your mouth. Because if you have a microphone very, very close like this, you'll sound very different if you were all the way back here. It's amazing what that can do. Now, you don't need to be up close and personal. If you have like this sort of a setup, your microphone is attached right to your headphones. Put it in a position that it's not rubbing up against your face because it'll make that kind of. Ah, 
bad Jesus sound, right? You don't want that. So you need to move it out just a little bit. Okay? Okay. Now, everyone says, Murphy, remember, you can also set cut off when talking when group flights on VATSIM so you can talk on Discord uh, and then you transmit on VATSIM. It doesn't backfeed over Discord. Oh, nice. Yeah, you'll have to let me know that, though. You'll have to let me know how to do that, uh, Stuart. But that sounds really good. Uh, Dwayne Case is here as well. Good day to Dwayne. Hope you're well, man. Hope you're well. Um, so these are pretty much your Discord settings. You guys need to have this set up for tonight because this is what we're going to practice with tonight. We'll move on to vPilot. We'll have a look at what... It, it, they're all kind of the same. You can actually go through your Windows settings. So, for example, if you look at the bottom right-hand corner, click on the little speaker button. Yeah, speaker button. This might vary if you're on Windows 10 or 11. You can open up your sound settings. These settings are sound, so they are, right? Anyway, if you move this gadget over here, you can choose your output and your input. Pretty straightforward. It's the same crack again. And you can test your microphone, right? So you can do all the testing with the stuff in the thing. You can do it from within Windows. The only reason I'm not going to go too much into Windows because there are differences between Windows 10, Windows 11, you have all this sort of crack to contend with. You might be using Discord on a Mac, for example. You might be using Discord on something else, right? So they're in your Windows settings as well. But once you know the crack that you need to make sure you're on push to talk and that your hardware is working and it's registering the sound, you're laughing. You're laughing, all right? So, so far we've spoken about our hardware. We've spoken about the... PC settings when it comes to our software, right? Uh, Discord settings, that was a video from Gibbo. And then uh, general sound advice. Do you like that? Sound advice. Next up, we're going to have a look at some of the other things, right? The other things. Uh, good man, Gibbo. Now, VATSIM. The virtual air traffic... No, virtual air traffic control simulation. Essentially, VATSIM, right? Now, VATSIM is free... It's only available to pilots who are on PC. It's not available for the Xbox pilots because at the moment there is no way for you to connect your Xbox to this network. At the moment. Things might change over the coming months or years, but at the moment we're kind of stuck. You just can't use it. And it's, it, it was a, I don't know, it was just, I won't say it was a failure, but like it was a missed opportunity. But anyway, we'll see what happens, right? So what we need to do with VATSIM, well, we need to join VATSIM because we're going to be doing some flying with VATSIM, right? And uh, you can learn all about it. The website is there. Again, if you go through the uh, this book, right, and if you want to find out where the networks are, here's VATSIM. You can click on this button. It'll bring you to the VATSIM website. You can click on IVAO's website. And we have a bit of a spiel about each one. Well, VATSIM, experiencing realistic ATC procedures around the world, ATC and pilot training, interacting with over 100,000 aviation enthusiasts for free. And it's open to Microsoft Flight Simulator, P3D, X-Plane, and Flight Sim 10. Access is free, coverage is global, and it requires a basic understanding. And you have to pass the initial orientation test to be able to fly on network. All right? So that's what VATSIM pretty much is. A quick summary. IVAO, the International Virtual Aviation Organization, or IVAO for short, was founded in 1998 to provide an online platform for flight simulation enthusiasts uh, to enjoy their hobby in a simulated real-world environment, uh, in company of other people flying or providing ATC control services. Platforms are for Microsoft Flight Sim, P3D, X-Plane, and FSX. Access, it's free. Coverage, global. And the requirement is a basic understanding, and you have to pass an initial orientation test. Very similar, right? Pilot Edge. Now, Pilot Edge is a different kettle of fish, right? Pilot Edge is a payware platform. It's a subscriber service. You've got to pay money to use this service. But in return, work with live air traffic controllers 15 hours a day and engage your flying brain from home. See other aircraft and hear other pilots on the radio, put on your headset, dial up ground and call for taxi. It's that easy. Now, that's a quick summary of Pilot Edge, and I've taken all this from their websites. Pilot Edge is a, if we want to refer to study level sim or study level high fidelity, Pilot Edge is up there because a lot of their controllers tend to be real world controllers because they use it for training, right? Now, the coverage is at the moment, it's in the western part of the United States. There's no Pilot Edge in Europe. There's no Pilot Edge in New York or whatever. It's all based on the Western slate of the United States. 
Um, and you need an enhanced understanding and you have to pass the initial orientation test in order to fly on the network. Pilot Edge, it's, it's just that higher level of fidelity. It's not to say one is better than the other, right? It's whatever suits you, that's the better one. It's whatever suits you. That's what we're after here. There are many people who will say Pilot Edge is just the best. Or other people will say, well, I prefer Vatsim. Which one is more realistic? We can be here until, you know, I grow a beard to find the answers. What's more realistic? Taking off in Dublin, landing in Spain, hearing an Irish accent out of Dublin and a Spanish accent in Spain. That's realistic, right? Or, well, no, Pilot Edge is realistic because it's they're following the real world procedures exactly. It's up to you. You choose which one is better. All right. And then, of course, we have our Discord. It's the designated ATC channel to enable Xbox pilots to use an in-house, in our house, ATC solution. Platform at the moment is just for Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's free and the coverage is restricted and limited uh, based on the areas that we publish. A basic understanding is required and pilots must use push to talk. Now, what I mean by a basic understanding, a basic understanding is, do you know how to use Discord? And do you have a basic understanding of how to fly a plane? Because if ATC says, if they give you an instruction, climb and maintain 4,000 feet. Huh? What do you mean? Yeah, I can see it. It's up there. You know what I mean? You need to have an understanding, a basic understanding, and we'll help you out along the way. All right? Or, you know, turn right heading 050. Huh? What time is it? Turn heading. Me head. So you, we need to understand all of these things. All right? Now, moving on. Moving on. We have the VATSIM registration, right? Uh, and it's free to it's free to register. So you just click on join. So we'll go through the motions here. But I highly recommend, even though you're not going to fly on the network for a week, a month, it doesn't matter. Get yourself registered on VATSIM. It's highly important because you now have access to all the training materials. VATSIM has a world of knowledge. So much knowledge base. Massive, in fact. Um, and it's all for free. Brilliant, right? So this is the rules for joining VATSIM. They're all self-explanatory. You can explain it, but you do need to be over the age of 13. That is just their terms of service. You must be over 13. Now, you can read up. You put in your name, and it must be your name. These are This is what VATSIM wants. They want your name. So you can't put in, you know, two-tone Murphy, right? No, you put in your name, your email and password, your age, the country of res country of residence. Where are you? Your state or providence? Password reminder. Uh, select a region and a division. Right now, what what does it mean by di uh, division? You can read up here. You must select a region or division. This would be your home and where you complete complete your ATC training, if you so wish. Regions and divisions can be changed in the future. If you're going to be based in Europe, well, you're going to have access to all the European training syllabus. If you're based in the United States, well, then you will have access to the FAA training syllabus. That's all. It doesn't mean that, ah, I'm only allowed to fly in America. Not at all. You can fly pretty much wherever you want. But you need to know the differences. The main differences of ATC, mainly, is the airspaces, you know, metric system and all this sort of jazz is there as well. But It's mainly to do with airspaces and uh, a little bit of ground control. In, in an absolute... The most basic kind of differences, that's where it's at. There are more, but just to kind of give you an idea, right? Uh, so, no one needs the information for a SIM site. Wait, what? You have to sign up in VATSIM to use Chartfox. Yeah, I think so, T. Miller, I think so. VFR is far more complex in Europe, so watch out. Yes, Skep, huge advice. And here's the thing, right? VFR, our community, what we do on our flights, and what most communities do when we're doing group flights, we don't even realise it, but we're flying VFR. We're looking visually. Ah, see, here's the thing. Here's a visual reference point. Here's a bridge. Here's a this. Here's the other. We're flying visually, right? Well, if we transfer that to air traffic control, VFR is way more complex, way more complex than IFR flights. The reason being is, if you're on an IFR flight, you have a flight plan. It's filed. You're cleared to en route from the whole way. You're under the guidance and control of air traffic control. You're under their control. They'll tell you what to do and where to do it. VFR is different. You don't necessarily need a full flight plan. You're not necessarily flying by absolute um, waypoints. 
you could say, well, I'm going to take off here. I'm going to follow that river until I get to that mountain range. And then I'm going to follow this road until I get to that city and land at that airport. It's very, very different. You need to be so aware of the airspaces that you don't suddenly, you know, fly into an area that you're not supposed to be in. And why mightn't you want to be in a certain area? If you're in a small little Cessna at 4,000 feet and you happen to stumble upon a military uh, airspace, right? Military airspaces. And they're flying F-18s or, you know, fast jets at low altitude. And next thing here's a Cessna. The chances of an accident are going to be straight up. Likewise, if you're in a small little Cessna and you decide to fly over an airspace, Dublin Airport, for example, but the chances of, you know, Michael O'Leary's 737 with Ryanair flying into you are extremely high. So you've got to be very aware of all the different airspaces that you can and cannot and should not enter without permission or without talking to ATC. All right. So rule of thumb, IFR is actually a little bit easier than VFR. Maybe you knew that, maybe you didn't. Anyway, once you register all of this, and they might, it takes a couple of hours, they might get back to you the next day, uh, but you, you, you ramble in, you ramble in. So I'm going to go into this page here now. This shouldn't show anything, but just for, because it's me, lads, right? I'm just going to hide this for a minute, because it'll probably ask me for my date of birth. Oh, no, we're grand, right. Uh, oh, I need to authorise it. Do, 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 do. Yeah, authorise. Get in there now, you devil. Right, okay. So when you get in, Welcome back to VATSIM. And it's, it's, it's calling me by my first name. Robin. Robin Murphy. That's my name, right? And we can go in, we can look, look at the dashboard. We can see any vacancies that are there within VATSIM. That could be on the board of membership or the management, or it could be controllers or whatever, right? The main thing we want to do here, over on the left-hand side, I'll disappear my mush. This is highly, highly important. You have a membership help area, but then you have the education hub. This is amazing. This entire area, especially when it comes to the learning center, the learning center on VATSIM, it's very, very good indeed. Aviate, navigate, communicate. Ask a question if you're unsure. Maintain a positive and supportive attitude. There's no quit rage with this. Well, not yet, anyway. Um, but you have the entire pilot learning center. VATSIM basics. Let's click on VATSIM basics. One of the major keys to enjoying your time on VATSIM is getting use and getting the most out of your experience. Okay, there's the VATSIM basics. Little drop down, member rules, pilot clients, how do you get connected? This thing goes through everything for you. Choose a call sign, how do you do it? Uh, and how to know if an airport or airspace is controlled on VATSIM. Then you go to aviation knowledge. Airspace, principles of flight. The thing will teach you how to fly. It's a huge resource, right? <laughs> Ailerons is Batman. <laughs> Weather theory, airport operations, transponders, like you name it, it has it. And what's amazing here is, lads, this is free. So even if you are an Xbox pilot and you've no access to a PC to fly on VATSIM, well, I would still recommend joining VATSIM because you can do the groundwork now. You can do the learning now and still apply what you've learned in the sim and then transfer that temporarily to Discord or until a time that there is a solution to have Xbox pilots flying with VATSIM. It's amazing. Then you have these master classes, new member orientation course. This gadget here, and it's in, it's in, different, uh, it's in different languages. This orientation course, you need to pass this in order to be granted uh, or permitted to fly on VATSIM. You need to pass a little test. It's not very difficult. Um, why aren't we pictures loading? Error. Anyway, it, 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 it's not beyond anyone. It's not beyond the realms. All the information is there. You just have to read it, right? You just have to read it. Part one, complete. And then you go to part two and so on, right? So there will be questions there. All right. So that's your homework for the week. Uh, along with your official documents under the resources of my VATSIM documents and resources. They're all there. You need to do that. Your homework for this week, join VATSIM, complete the new member orientation course. Don't worry if you fail, you can take the test again. Don't worry about it. But do the new member orientation course. This is going to give you access to the network in which you can either join to observe or join to fly. You have to do this. So write that one down, right? The dog ate my homework. <laughs> How many questions? I can't remember. Was it 50 or something? Um, I, I can't remember. 
I did this years ago. Uh, my exams. Look at that. I failed it before and then I passed it. Right? Look, I actually failed it. I got 73%. Now, I can have a look here. I can show you. I don't want to give you all the answers. You need to learn this stuff. It's all been a good saying. Do this now. You need to learn it yourself, right? This might not or mightn't load. This was done ages ago. Uh, right, here we go. A pressure altitude of 35,000 feet on the standard pressure setting would be expressed as what? Flight level 3,500, flight level 35,000, altitude 35,000, or flight level 350. It's a basic question. Pressure altitude. And if you're unsure, all the information, it's here in VATSIM. You can grab it there. Anyone else, here's like, here's like, the, the here's another nugget, right? Uh... Here's a nugget for you. Write this ticket down. If you're ever unsure of what ATC sounds like, or you know the way you might listen to a podcast or you might listen to something before you go to bed, or if you're going for a walk or you're going for a run, well, tune into liveatc.net. Listen to actual um, ATC. So you put in the ICAO code or the airport code, do a search, and if we have a listen to this, uh, where is the one that I can just pick everything? Clearance. Uh, here we go. Right. So we'll tune into this. Listen there in an L browser. Now, it depends on the airport you're going to. They mightn't have information. But they should. What time are we now? Quarter past nine at night time. So we're waiting to hear. We're listening to Dublin. Delivery ground tower approach at the centre. Uh, the fort has one zero three six. You want to see that This is live. So that's ATC talking to Shamrock, that's Aer Lingus, and he's giving him taxi instructions. But the whole idea is, listen to this stuff. Get yourself familiar with what they're saying. And if you find a certain airport, try and tune into, like, ground or clearance delivery. Because that's the initial, what are they talking about, right? Uh, so have a listen to that. It's not there in the UK. Martel, Gold Star, Readability 3, whoop, the yard, right? Brilliant. But make sure that's liveatc.net. It's not available in the UK because, well, the UK just, they have their own rules and regulations. But uh, it works in Ireland. It works in most United States airports, Canada airports, so on and so forth. If we go, for example, uh, I don't know, KLAS. Let's have an old gawk in here, shall we? So we have approach, 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 they're all approach, final, departure, runway 01, ground. Let's tune into ground. Right, so we're listening to Las Vegas. It may not work, but it might work. And then you can listen into that area, right? I use a handheld radio to listen to it in the UK. There you are. So you can get, you can buy these scanners. And they're not terribly expensive. You pay anywhere from 30 to 300 euros, right? Uh, and it's a, it's a VHF, or in some cases UHF, and you literally tune the radio frequency in. I don't think we have that in here. Uh, helicopter, ramp, tower, tower. You just scroll down and find the one you want, right? So we don't have, it's, there's nothing coming through, but if you can find one. So here's, we'll get tower frequency. Let's have a listen. Hopefully we get something in here, right? And it's only a matter of finding out the airport that you want to listen in on. Because you'll, you'll learn fairly quick. Once you're listening to how people are doing it in the real world, so you're laughing. Do you know what I mean? Uh, a DVB-T will we'll do with the right software. Oh, there you go. Some of the old radios, and a wireless, the old wireless, you can actually tune in with some old radios as well. Um, it, it, it's, it, it, you can actually up the frequency of a little, what are they called, a transistor, uh, and they do the job. Yeah, this isn't loading in now, but... Yeah, no, that's okay, Ailerons. That's why you can't access it on this live ATC. So you, if I were to put in English channels, it'll come up and say, notice, unauthorised use prohibited. They're not allowed access UK uh, ATC, which is fair enough. But you can get all the Irish ones, as I said, you get America, you get a heap of them, right? Anyway, liveatc.net. That is important. Write it down and do be sure to have an L listen, right? Now, moving on, where was I? VATSIM registration, yeah. So register with VATSIM, pass the test, 
don't worry if you fail. Look, I failed here back in the day. Which of these is a weather forecast providing information about weather conditions expected at a particular airfield in the coming 24 hours? I thought it was a METAR because I'm stupid. Terminal area forecast. The answer is in the question. Forecast. Doesn't say, there's no F in METAR. Well, there is if you get it wrong. Then it's an F in METAR, right? But TAF, terminal area forecast. METER. Meteorological terminal area report or something, right? Something like that. Uh, but yeah, you didn't RTFQ. I didn't RTML. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't RTML. We all remember what that was. Uh, there was only one P and a H. Uh, a a, a MEFAR. Yeah, a MEFAR. But anyway, there's questions here. Don't worry if you get them wrong. Now, don't go in as this, you know, Mr. Hotshot and say, yeah, I know all the rules and you get them wrong. You'll just feel deflated and a bit like an Egypt. Do a bit of reading up on it. We have all week. And if anyone can't do it during this week, well, don't worry. We're not going to leave folks behind. We'll try and catch up. If anyone's struggling, we'll allow for that. We'll spend more time with people who are struggling. We're all moving at the same pace here. So don't worry if all of this is going over your head. Just don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. It'll be grand. If I can do it, me, this Egypt, if I can actually do some of this stuff, you guys are going to be fine, right? You're absolutely fine. You'd be better than what Hello I do. There. Jesus, what was that? Oh, it's a man, right. Um, welcome in. Thank you for the follow. Good to see you. Uh, right, so... That's him. Get yourself registered. Start going into the pilot training area and the learning centre. It is absolutely incredible. And pretty much everything you need to know about everything in aviation, it's here. It's a, it's a wonderful area to learn everything, right? So, that is uh, Vatsim. Now, moving on. How do we connect uh, everything to the PC or to the flight sim, right? Now, this little map I'm showing you here these are all pilots flying on VATSIM who are connected to the network. So they're flying on Microsoft Flight Sim or P3D, X-Plane, whatever. Um, but all of these little green dots, isn't this pretty impressive? This is live. This is how many pilots are currently flying on. There are currently 955 users flying on the VATSIM network. How cool is that? It is quiet. Yeah, it is. Double that figure and that's about normal. But how cool is that? that it's amazing. That's fantastic. And then you can see what areas are up and running. Um, it's, it's, it's so cool, right? These are all individual human people. You know, or very close to it. They could identify as something else. But they're people flying, right? And if you look at it here, you can kind of find, oh, Jesus, here's an event because there's a whole load of DAL. Well, there's the United. DAL aircraft. Deltas, right? Delta Airlines. Flying from Cord to KATL. Now, Cord, I think that's Chicago O'Hare, and KATL is Atlanta. These are little ICAOs. Now, a couple of things to notice, and we will be touching on this shortly. DAL. See the way they all have a DAL? That's their call sign. Because they're an airline. So the airline call sign is Dallas, or DAL. That's followed by their flight number, Dallas 1147, or Dallas 1263, or Dallas 2345. That's, that's their identifier. That's who they are, right? So that's where it all is. Why am I saying Dallas? Delta. Dallas. Delta Airlines. Dallas. We just made a new virtual airline. Delta. Beg your pardon. So D-A-L is Delta Airlines. D-A-L. So Delta 1263, Delta 1147. Yeah. And then there's a UAL at the front. That's United Airlines. They're United, I think, is their call sign, isn't it? So United 960. All right. Uh, and then there's loads of others. There's loads of others. BAW, for example. BAW. Well, that's British Airways. Now, it gets a little bit tricky. British Airways are not known as British Airways as their call sign. Their call sign, they're actually known as Speedbird. Huh? It doesn't say Speedbird. It goes back many, many moons ago. They had a logo that, that was some sort of a bird and it was something to do with the Concorde. Roughly. I don't know the history, but it's something around that. I read it before, right? Aer Lingus, for example, uh, which is E-I-N, Echo India, November. Jesus, there's no one flying Aer Lingus. That's a bad state of affairs. 
uh, Aer Lingus. You don't say Aer Lingus 235. No, E-I-N or Aer Lingus. It's Shamrock. Their call sign is Shamrock. All right. We'll learn about all of these. Don't worry about all of this now. I have a resource here that, that lists every single airline in the world and what they're called. Pretty cool. And that's another one that we'll write down. But anyway, all of these pilots have successfully connected their headphones, a V pilot, and they're logged onto the VATSIM network and they're currently flying. 950 aircraft are airborne throughout the world. That's pretty cool, right? How do they connect their flight simulator to VATSIM? Well, we're going to have a look at a program called V Pilot. V Pilot. And again, if you go into our little training manual and you want to have a look at here, how do you connect V Pilot or X Pilot if you're using the X plane uh, simulator? V Pilot is a very basic pilot client with a limited feature set. It is intended to provide the minimum features required to get a pilot connected and flying on VATSIM. It requires FSU IPC or XPU IPC uh, in order to connect to your simulator. Click settings in the settings dialog on the network tab. Enter your personal VATSIM credentials, including your SID, CID, password, name, and home airport. Select a server of your choice. All the servers are connected. Most people select the server that's closest to where they live. That's just for lag or latency. And be sure to test your microphone and headphones and allocate a key bind for push to talk. Now, we've already spoken about that on Discord. This is a different solution. This is going to get you onto the VATSIM network. Discord gets you onto, well, our little makey up network on Discord, right? And again, with this document that I created, it's this is a clickable link. Click on the link and it opens up uh, the website, which is this. So you can download it. And there's documentation there. It teaches you how to use it. Anyone using a dual, uh, it's going to be, oh, look at this. There won't be a server to choose from soon. It's going to be an automatic assignment. Oh, nice. Nice, Skep, nice. Does it need to be a real world airport? Does what, Eamon? Where you're taking off from? If you're on VATSIM, yeah, usually. Because if it's a makey up airport, if they don't have the charts or they don't have the information, the controller can't really do much for you. Recommendation would be, um, Skep, are you allowed to do that? Can you pick up an IFR whilst airborne, provided you log it and flag it and you tell the, you advise the controller, hey, I'm going to pick up my IFR from this location? I think you can. Um, but what's important here is, yes, you can, you can. So what you would do there, Eamon, you would plan your flight, take off from the airport and then contact ATC when you fly within their uh, airspace and say, hey, well, you don't say hey, but you know what I mean. Uh, now, there's documentation here. If you're using a dual PC setup, if you're into streaming or you just have two PCs, multi-systems, right? And if you're like me, my microphone, what I'm speaking to you on now, is actually part of my streaming PC. The flight sim is on a gaming PC. How do we make this work? Well, vPilot has you covered. There is a way to run vPilot or vPilot in what's called a host mode or a network mode. So if I click on vPilot now, it'll probably look for an update. So it's a new version now, we don't install it. And then if I open up vPilot on the other side, so see the way, is it connected to my simulator? Yes, am I connected to the remote? So it's looking for the remote connection. And that's over here, right? Uh, now, where are we at? There's not so many people coming in. Welcome in, everybody. Uh, I have been looking for a beginner's guide to this. Ah, Corn Wolf. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, who is this? Aviator Medic. Hello. Welcome in. Welcome in. Uh, <laughs> the bot got you, but don't worry. Now, if I connect up vPilot Remote, basically what this does, you'll see this page now lighting up. It's going to say, hey, I've connected. I can see it. Hello there. Now, see the way it says connected to remote and connected to the simulator. Now, here's where the genius happens. I can use FSUIPC to do absolute magic, considering the flight sim and the flight sim hardware is on a gaming PC. My microphone and my audio is coming from my streaming PC. If I press a button on my flight sim controls, how the hell does that get over to the streaming PC? FSUIPC can do that. You can tell FSUIPC when I click this button on that PC, I want you to send it to another FSUIPC on a network and I want it to mean this button. 
you can do that. I'm not going to go into that now. That's absolute pure advanced mode. If anyone has a two PC setup, drop me a DM. I'm happy to go through it and show you how to set it up. It takes about 15 minutes. It's not rocket science, but how cool is that? I can press a button on that PC and it'll transfer it to a button on this PC. It's it's science. It's NASA. It's we've landed on the moon, right? Hey, Keen Lafford is here. Good to see you, Keen. Welcome in. Welcome in. Uh, right. So you'll notice that this page here. This hosting mode is a good bit different. Bring up your mouse. It's a good bit different than this screen here. And for good reason. The host mode is only making sure I'm connected to my sim, I'm connected to the remote. And once I jump onto the um network, it'll it'll tell me I'm connected to the network. So that's my little on-screen thing. This screen here, that beep is that other vpilot saying, hey, you disconnected it. That's quite okay. On this little screen here, this little devil here, right? This is what the little pop-up box will look like. Any of you guys have used LRM or any of them, well, we're used to seeing these sort of boxes. And we'll talk about what we see. So you have a disconnect or a connect button on the top left. So this is after you go through your settings, you put in all your details, as we explained, your uh, uh, VATSIM name, the CID, so on and so on, right? You connect. Now, you can connect to the network. Mode C or mode Charlie is the very same as altitude reporting on uh, with general aviation. Mode C is essentially your flight number and the altitude, or in some cases speed. Mode C or mode Charlie, that's what you need to have when you turn on your transponder, usually when you go to depart. When you squawk mode Charlie, ATC can see your altitude and your aircraft details. All right? Ident, we've seen that on the uh, on a transponder. Ident. You click the little ident, it'll put in a flash and it'll it'll send the information immediately from your aircraft to ATC. So they call it ident. You'll hear some people saying, you know, squawk uh, and then ident and then you see the flash. If you listen to like Steve O'Wan Evo, yeah, here's the flash in the box or whatever, right? Flight plan goes without saying, that's where you're going to file your flight plan. And we'll get into better or really awesome ways to do flight plans. And then you have your settings. You'll notice over here you have your call sign. We're going to go through the call sign. Then you can see your radio frequencies. COM1 and COM2. And then you have TX and RX. TX means transmitting. RX means receiving. So the whole idea is when you press a button, you're transmitting. And when they're talking, you'll see the RX light up, you're receiving. It'll then show you the controllers in range. Now, this is based on where you are located within the simulator. So if, for example, if you're in Dublin and there's no ATC in the area, well, the controllers in range might be blank or you might have to scroll down and you'll see London Control or, you know, Scottish Approach or whatever, right? At the same time, if you want to start your flight in, you know, Australia, uh, well, they could all be online, but, 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 whoa, there's loads of activity here. So it's going to show you what the frequencies are. Now, this is a bonus because your charts are going to show what frequencies are used, but always go by what FATSIM controllers are using. And the reason being is, we'll learn about this later, it's all to do with the airspaces. A VATSIM controller, at most airports, you would have, for example, ground, tower, departure, approach, clearance, center, whatever, right? Um, with VATSIM, you might have just tower, and that controller is looking after all the ground and airborne traffic. It depends on the day. It depends on the controller. We won't get bogged down with who's who, but just be aware of that. All right. And then, ha then you have all your settings. And again, it's something very similar to what I've showed you on Discord, with your voice meter moving up and down, your push to talk, what audio devices are you using? And then it goes into model matching, right? If we refer to our little uh, book down here, Model matching. When you open up the menu page, this is what the menu page or the settings look like. So your network, notifications, fonts, audios, push to talk, model matching, custom rules. I want to put in a custom rule. Uh, performance, updates, and miscellaneous. This is what the, the options look like, right? Um, model matching. There are ways to do it. I've explained to you here how to do it using FSLTL. That's free. If you have just flights, uh, FS traffic, that's payware but you can also use the model matching rules that come with that and you can upload them into your vpilot. That means when vpilot sees an aircraft on VATSIM, it can identify what it is 
and it'll tell the simulator load this model with this livery so you can see it. All right. That's down the line. We'll figure all that out later, but you can do it. It's relatively straightforward. Once you've done it once, you're happy out. You'll always be able to do it. All right. Uh, and then what else do we have? Uh, push to talk. That's a no. That's you need to push to talk. Uh, what network you're on. Now, there's fonts as well. Here's something really handy when it comes to VATSIM. VATSIM supports text as well, which is super handy for a number of reasons. Number one, if you can't talk or you've no microphone, but you have a headset and you still want to fly online, well, you can use text. You can type it out. Now, I don't know how the workload is going to be, but you can do that. And ATC will respond to you either by voice or by text. You just tell them what you have. That's really handy, right? Um, another scenario might be, as I said, microphone could be broken. Perhaps you're not able to speak. So you have options there. Perhaps your hearing isn't great and you want to read the information. Well, they'll type the information back to you. Really, really handy. And it's, it's a nice feature to have. As far as I know, Pilot Edge does not support that. As far as I know, I could be wrong. Strike me with electricity now. Yeah, no, I don't think they have it, right? Uh, so... If I'm wrong on that now, just shout, hey, Mechanical Madness is here. Top of the morning to you, man. Jesus, you're up past your breakfast. Um, so anyway, model matching, we'll get into that in another day, but FSLTL VMR. Just do a Google, model matching FSLTL. They have all, the, they've done all the hard work for us. They'll tell you what to do and how to do it. All right? Um, now, where are we at? Right, we're moving on, we're moving on. So that is the vPilot settings. Are we happy enough with vPilot? We're not using it tonight. We're using our Discord, but that's our vPilot settings, okay? And if you're if you're unsure how to get your Discord settings, click on the little picture on the file that I created. It'll link you to that video. If you're unsure about vPilot, click on the picture. It'll bring you to the website. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Skep says, text pilots are more work, and in many cases, it'll be much more stressful for pilots. Yes, yeah, it can be. Yeah, it can be. But the idea behind it... Um, the idea behind it is, it's for those uh, perhaps with a disability or less able. Uh, it could be those who genuinely want to fly and don't have a way of communicating by voice, right? But it can also be handy by, for example, to make life very easy. Here is a situ here's a scenario, a make-believe scenario. Let's say, for example, you happen to be the only pilot online in Shannon and you have a controller. The fact that you can send a text to that controller is extremely handy. Like you could put into your flight plan, you know, first time pilot, new pilot, inexperienced pilot, the greatest Egypt of them all pilot, right? You can tell them that and they'll say, all right. However, if you're unsure, you can drop the controller a message, especially if it's quiet and uh, hello, is it okay to do this? Or may I do this? Or can I do this? It's not please sir or please ma'am with a cherry on top. You're just talking to someone else. We're people, right? But instead of talking over the airwaves, as it were, because you don't want to sound like a klutz, you can just ask them by text. And then if they come back, what? Oh, sorry, that was a typo. All right, I've done it before, right? Now, there's something I want to touch on when it comes to letting ATC know that you're a student pilot. Skeptic Canton said it earlier on. The controllers, they're experienced. They know if someone new is speaking for the first time or they have very little experience and they're still in the first couple of hours of online communication. They know this. They can get a sense of it, right? Interesting development in the real world. And I want to show you a quick uh, article here. I found this interesting. Uh, there was an incident a couple of years ago. Um, and what happened was there was a fatality because a student pilot ended up doing a thing, right? Now, the response to this, the response to this the UK authorities decided to introduce a student call sign prefix. Now, I need to double check uh, with ailerons. Stuart, is that still the case? Do you now have to address yourself as student pilot and then your call sign? Or have they dropped that? Because I know in Ireland they do. Skep says, yes, Murph, but there is a difference between texting a private message and being a text pilot. If you use text for ATC, it'll be on the frequency chat, not as a private message. It helps a lot as newbies... Uh, via private messages. Yes, 100%. So you, you'll see that in vPilot. You can send the controller a private message 
or you just put it into the main bar on the frequency, you'll see like a chat open up. We'll do all this in a week or two. You see the chat open up. That's everyone can see one box. If you go directly to the controller, double click, that's only a private message to and from. We'll do all of this, so don't worry, right? Uh, Stuart says, yes, on initial contact. Yeah, student is still a thing, on initial call. Yeah, so you would say, Shannon Ground, student pilot, Echo India, Tango Tango Mike, or student, I think it's student pilot, but student, Echo India, uh, Tango Tango Mike. You're letting the controller know you're a student because their workload is so much busier in the real world. As Skep says, controllers will know if someone's new or not. Or maybe they won't. Maybe like they're like me and I'll say, hey, yo, what's happening? You know, this fella sounds like he has an idea when really he doesn't, right? Uh, but I thought that was interesting. Now, I don't think VATSIM requires this at the moment. However, I will say this. If you're new and you're still learning, use this as part of your flight plan. You can put in your notes in your flight plan when you go to file it. Just put it in student pilot or put it in, uh, you know, first time online. Just give that extra bit of information to the controller. When they'll see it, they can see it instantly. Ah, yeah, fair enough. I'm dealing with a student pilot here. Or worse, if they get 10 flight plans and they're all students, at that stage, your internet is going to turn off itself, right? Uh, but that's what you do there. So uh, anyway, we'll, we'll delve on here a little bit. Your homework so far this week is register on VATSIM and do the orientation test. Then by all means, download vPilot uh, and then we'll kind of take it from there. All right. Any questions so far? We're going well here now, lads. We're going very well. Next up, we're going to have a talk about access to charts, access to weather, our flight planning, then our call signs, and then we're jumping in to actually do some voice testing, right? So if there's any questions, let me know. We'll play some music. A bit of background noise. <sighs> How are we doing so far? Are we all right? How am I doing? Is anyone going to come back and give out to me? Man, give out. Uh, <laughs> bot set up with Lincoln no, promo code. Checklist. Empire Kicking is here. Welcome in, Empire Kicking. Good to see you, man. Uh, oh, yeah. Here's one for you. Right, give us. So we can just type that into the chat now, can we? Yes, we can. No, we can't. Check list. Hang on. I'll try it again. Checklist. Ah, look at this, lads. Goosh. So while we're here, right? I want to I want to share something with you. I created I created uh, an online document and it it was my first ever digital product and it was well chuffed and I was charging a euro for it. A euro. Right? Now wait and hear this. So what it is, it's an IFR checklist. It is this gadget here that I've created. Now I have been heavily inspired by Aviation 101. Josh Flowers, he had something similar and it makes total sense. And I've done, well, my version uh, to make it work within flight simulation. Essentially, this is a document that you can download, print it off in like book form. It fits two on an A4 page and you keep this as your notes when you want to do IFR clearances. Now, this is a payware product. I created it, I put it up on my website, and I sell this for one euro. However, tonight, for everyone here, well, we have a promo code that'll give you a 100% discount so you can download this for free. And it's yours forever. It's yours forever. You can print it off as many times as you like. Double-sided paper. You'll end up with, like, I have it here somewhere. You'll end up, like, with a book, which is really, really handy because literally you fill out this sheet of what you need. So if you put in exclamation point checklist, it'll give you a link and the instructions of what to do and how to do it. And then you have access to this, right? So exclamation point checklist, all one word. Click on the link. There's a promo code. Uh, and This is all thanks to Givo. There's a promo code there. Ramble over and you will be able to download this PDF, portable document file. 
See, I remember stuff. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly talk to you about this. This is like the intermission when we're going for a cup of tea. Uh, with this checklist or with this Hello item. There. Hello there. We just got to follow. Welcome in. Welcome in. Um, what you do with this, you print it out because you, you physically write on this. Now, if you want to be fancy, you can get it laminated. Stuart told me that. Aileron's into wind, gets a gold star. If you laminate this and use a whiteboard marker, you can reuse the one. Oh, did you hear that? I'm after bashing my hand. Uh, you can reuse this. All the time. You know, just get an old glontor and wipe it off. A glontor. Look that one up in the dictionary, right? Uh, but anyway, I'll tell you how to use it. Are you ready? The date is for the date, right? You, you write in the date. Your tail number or your call sign, that goes up here. Your aircraft, what are you flying in? Because as, as flight sim pilots, Jesus, what am I? Now you'll know about the aircraft. But when you go to plan your route, you might not. Oh, am I in the 800 or the 600? Is, a PA, is it a PA-28 or a PA... You know what I mean? And then packs. This means passengers. Um, this is only for kind of general information. I'm unsure the VATSIM requirements of letting people know how many souls on board. It's it's a real world thing. Um, you would have to report two souls on board. Hello two there. people. Right? Hello there. Welcome in. we got to follow. Who be this? Uh, Salt. Good to see you. Glantor. Come on, Muse fan. Now, this document is designed for... Instrument flight rules or IFR clearances. Are we ready? Now, hear this. We have departure ATIS. The wind, visibility, sky conditions, temperature and dew point, barometric pressure, the approaches and the runways. We'll get all this information by tuning into what's called an ATIS, an Automatic Terminal Information Service. Basically, a recording of the weather which updates every 30 minutes and it's allocated with a code. Information alpha to Zulu. The code changes all the time. So that's why they'll tell you information bravo is current. Oh, 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 oh. The information I have is alpha, right? I need to retune in. That's how that works, right? You put in the name of your departure airport. You write in departure airport. You put in the A to frequency, clearance frequency, ground and tower. There may not be a clearance online. There may not be ground. There might just be the tower. But you put in all the stuff so you're looking at it to say, hey, this is going to work. All right. Uh, the worse the weather, the more frequently it changes too. Depots. Correct. I think it's is it by kind of generally it's 30 minutes or, or an hour. Right. But if the weather is given at all sorts of crazy and it's changing. Well, every if a pilot reports back, they'll hello ATC. There. AT, hello there. ATC might sometimes ask a pilot to give them an update. Hey, what was the what was that like? You know what I mean? And they'll get live information. Yeah, no, listen, it's raining over there or, you know, the temperature is bad or I lost visibility or the ceiling of the cloud is this. It changes, yeah? But anyway, they allocate a code, again, using the phonetic alphabet. You can't say, I have information N because someone will tune in M. Do you know what I mean? So I have information November is current. Grant. Anyway, uh, now, clearance. Here is an acronym. I think that's what they're called or an abbreviation. CRAFT. It says craft. Now, it's not like a craft beer, although they are lovely too. C-R-A-F-T. Remember that word, craft. Highly important. Now, I wrote it down here so you won't forget it. C stands for clearance. Cleared to. So, let me, let, let me give you the idea. We're going to report here. Wait and see this now, right? Have a listen. Just sit back there and think of Ireland and have a listen, right? Uh, so if I was talking to, the, to you know, ATC. Shannon Ground, November 235 Romeo Mike, with information Bravo at the General Aviation Parking. I said that wrong. We'll start again. See, even I make mistakes. <laughs> Shannon Ground, November 235 Romeo Mike, is a Cessna 172 at parking Bravo, information Echo, IF4 to Galway. And then ATC come back. November 235, Romeo Mike, Shannon Ground. You are cleared to Galway as filed. Because I filed a flight plan, yeah? Or it could be via the SID, it could be via runway 26, whatever, they'll tell you. Next up is the route, they'll tell you the route. Then they'll give you the altitudes. Climb and maintain 2,000, expect 6,000 in 10 minutes. That means we're initially going to climb to 2,000, and we'll know we're going to be going up to 6,000 in about 10 minutes. Departure frequency, 118.6. Squawk 
Squawk, one, two, one, two. I have to read all of this back. That's why I've, I've designed it this way, because once you, once you request your clearance, this is done out in such a way, you're cleared to via blah, right? You know, cleared to roam via whatever departure or, or SID. Remember, it's IFR. Uh, the route could be as filed or they could change the route for you depending on the weather, depending on traffic. Don't worry about that now. Would you write down the route or as filed? Altitudes. Climb and maintain or climb initially 4,000, expect 6,000 in 10 minutes or 10 minutes after. You'll hear how it all sounds, but you write it down. Frequency, contact departure on 118.6, squawk 1212. So they're telling you your departure frequency is going to be this and your squawk code for your transponder is going to be that. Don't worry about what I've said or how I've said it. I've made mistakes, I know that. But the point here is what I'm trying to say. This checklist will allow you to write down the critical information that you must read back. You request your clearance. They give you the clearance. You have to confirm what they have just told you. And if it all goes well, ATC will say, November 235 Romeo Mike, read back, correct. Jackpot, lads, we've won the lotto. Do you know what I mean, right? That's what we're looking for. Anyway, next we have our taxi instructions. So taxi to runway, right in your runway. Via. Jesus, where are we going with this? This is why charts are important. Taxi via Alpha, Bravo, whole short, runway 16. Okay. You write in all the information here. When we go to do our flights, I'll fill this out in detail with you, step by step. Then you put in your departure briefing. This is more aimed for real world, but as a rule of thumb, you want to know what you're doing. So your takeoff uh, uh, runway, right? Uh, the distance required, distance available, and your abort plan. What are we going to do if we haven't got airborne, airborne by such a place? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. <laughs> right? Yeah, you'd have to plan. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, you'd have to plan uh, a, a rejected takeoff. It might happen. Now, fat sim controllers might be too happy about it. But again, if you're at a, if you're on a quiet airfield and you say, hey, can I practice this? Sure. Right? So you can do all these things. Initial altitude and then your initial heading or your fix. Then we put in our destination details. When we're up in the air, we can start putting in our destination ATIS. Alpha, wind, 2605 knots, visibility greater than 10, sky conditions, CAV OK, temperature 20, dew point 15, barrow 299 or 2, approach, runway, ILS, whatever. Yeah? And then you have all your approach details here. Anyway, this is now free. Grab it with the link, exclamation point checklist. Have a look at it, have a read of it. And in, you know, over the next couple of Mondays. <laughs> yeah, yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, behave. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be working on this. All right. So it was once pay where, now it's for free. Enjoy it. And I hope you guys find it useful. Right. Uh, and Gibbo, thank you very much indeed for setting all that up. Right. Now we're getting somewhere. Um, charts. So we've spoken about charts. Where do we get our charts, right? So we could actually, hang on. We go back up to the contents page and we click on charts, right? Oh, look, I didn't link them. Right, never mind. We go to charts. What are charts? Why are charts important? Well, we know why they're important, but we can go into more detail, right? Uh, who's giving out to me now? Uh, you need to say Cessna 172 slant golf or slant uniform, whatever your configuration is. Depends on where you are. You don't necessarily do that because uh, you don't expect altitude in the US or you don't. We don't normally get expect altitude here, boss. In the US, it's more of a given. Yeah, but there's differences between the US and Europe. Don't worry about that now for the moment. That's all later on. We'll learn all about airspaces. There's no point trying to figure out what's right and wrong now. It's all it sounds wonderful, but we'll, we'll focus more on that when it comes to it. Yeah. Without the charts, how would we even know what was number one, says Eamon? Well, that's it, right? Charts are one of the most important tools for pilots during a flight. By using a chart, just as in the real world, you are able to plan the next stages of your flight using the information published. Charts provide information needed when it comes to airports and the airspaces that you're going to be flying through. SIDs and STARS, right, departures and arrivals, uh, have to be checked and planned prior to you flying into those areas. Now, what chart types do we need? We have VFR charts which anywhere from part one, general, en route and aerodrome charts. Uh, we also have parking, ground movement, traffic circuit, departure and arrival charts. Don't worry about that for the moment. 
Then when it comes to the IFR, you'd be looking at your reference, taxi ground, SID, which is your standard instrument departure, star, standard arrival, approach, yeah, low altitude, high altitude, or low en route, high en route. There's all different types of charts. Now, where do we get this information? Where do we get our charts from? This is a, an absolute screamer, right? Well, let's start doing a bit of homework. Where is it now? So charts. First and foremost, anyone who's part of the Firefly Air virtual airline, that's our virtual airline, and uh, when you register over on fshub.io and you join Firefly Air, you'll notice on your main dashboard page, you have an airport lookup. Now, Viper Strike, the man and legend, has already inputted information for Shannon. If you type in Shannon's ICAO code, Echo India, November, November, and hit search, an error occur. Say it again, Murph. An error occurred. We could not check the airport. What? Try it again, Murph. There, right. Here's Shannon. We can see the name, the ICAO, where it's at, the type, its altitude, transition, and the local time. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Uh, now, we can have a look at some recent activity, who's been flying there, what's the nearest airfields, what runways does it have, and the information is posted, and now we have some charts. These charts have been added by Viperstrike. Now, here's the thing. When you're using free charts, back in the day, airline pilots or pilots using IFR had to carry around a big heavy pilot's bag because their chart folder was friggin' ginormous, because there was literally, literally hundreds of charts for the airport, for the routes that they're flying, and their arrival airport. They needed tons of them, right? Big, massive, heavy briefcase. That's almost done away with now, because, well, we have what's called an, an electronic flight bag, the EFB, that's home of your charts, right? Uh, however, if you want to look at a certain chart, let's look at the aerodrome chart for Shannon. You click on this, and there she loads in. Now, this is an AIP. This is published from the Irish Aviation Authority. And depending on the country that you're looking at, uh, well, you can have a look at that country's charts. So this is using FS Hub, for which we have populated a number of airports that we're going to be flying to and from. Now, how do you read these charts? Well, they give you a little key up here. Yeah, so you can kind of see, all right, okay, here is some information. I can see, for example, the aerodrome chart of ICAO. I can see its latitude and longitude, the airport elevation. I can see the frequencies, tower, ground, and ATIS. Right? Consult no times for latest information. Okay, we have no no times here at the moment. Shannon Airport. And we're looking for the date. When, when was this activated or the version number, right? See your runways, the direction, right? Uh, the bearing strength is there. Bearings are magnetic. Linear dimensions, don't worry about any of that. You're looking for runway length. So it's asphalt. That's telling you, okay, well, look, it's asphalt. And the length of the runway is in meters. Time so, to pull the so, switch, good buddy. so, hey, Fly is here. Many thanks for the raid. Welcome in. Good to see you. Welcome in, Raiders. Hope you had a great stream. Um, it's a 4,000 meter runway. Now, Shannon has a massive runway uh, for good reason. It was a backup facility uh, for the space shuttle landing should an emergency happen. They can actually land it in Shannon because the airport, the, the runway is huge, right? And then there's other things we can look here. You know, the different aprons, the taxiways have letters on them. So there's Alpha, very good. There's Delta, Bravo. All right, okay. Uh, we can see then there's an ILS here for runway uh, 06. There's an ILS up here for runway 24. Uh, so you have all these stuff going on in the chart. And then you get, you get a bit of a scale. So these charts are grand. They're absolutely fine. They're, they're free. They're wonderful. But you also have another option. Because you're going to be logged in with VATSIM, a completely free aviation chart application for educational flight sim. So we're going to log in here, right? And we're going to authorize this. And this should give me access now if I type in Shannon, Echo India, November, November, and I want to load. The content of this site is only intended for grant. Welcome to ChartFox. This is all ChartFox, right? Thanks for that. Now, we're looking for a donation, but we'll leave that be for the moment. Here's ChartFox, and I've put in Shannon. If I go to General or, or you know, Taxi, open up the Aerodrome chart. It's the very same one I was looking at. But instead of using, like, if you look at FS Hub and the layout, it's like, okay, I need to find the name of what I'm looking for. 
you know, is it, a, is it an ILS I'm looking for? Is it a this I'm looking for? Well, use something a little bit easier. If I want to find an approach or a star, well, click on the star and, okay, show me the arrivals for runway 24. Okay. It'll start loading them in. These are all the arrivals you can choose. Ah, nice. Okay. All right. So that's ChartFox and it's free. You just have to link. You can add charts to the dock as well. This has got a huge update. This is a, this is actually pretty good. Uh, so say, right, I want to keep that. I need this chart. That's important. Throw it into your dock, right? So plus it, it's now in your little dock. So when you're planning your flight, I need this, 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 and this, and you throw them into your little dock and away you go. You're laughing. And this is for free. No cost. Nice. Let's say, for example, now you do have a few, Bob, and you want the very, very best in the business. The best in the business, without a shadow of a doubt, is Navigraph. It's the best. Navigraph is a paid subscription, but it is extremely, extremely good. Not only that, but it will overlay your aircraft onto that screen. So you really know what's going on. In, in one of the latest updates for Navigraph, they've also included VFR, which is wonderful news, right? So, Navigraph is brilliant. If I want to look at an airport, let's click on Shannon. We can type it in and we have a whole load of information here, right? So we can say, right, information, charts or procedures. Well, information, general. Okay, Shannon, or Shannon Airport, elevation, it's a public airport. Let's look at the runways. And see these extra overlays, see these green things? Well, that's actually telling you what the weather is doing in terms of the wind. Oh, nice. Let's look at the weather. Hang on a second. This is giving us the weather for Shannon as well. Oh, hang on. So I have charts and weather. Nice. So it gives you what's called a raw meter. A whole load of numbers and letters. Huh? But then it decodes that for you. It also gives you a TAF, a terminal area forecast. What's going to be happening here? All right. Then we have comms. These are all the radio frequencies for Shannon. Really handy. What about the NOTAMs or notes to airmen? That's what NOTAM means. Special instructions that are applicable to this area. Well, it has all these as well. Now, let's look at charts. If I want to look at the uh, taxi, we can have a look at the airport info or the parking and stands. If you click on them or airport info, and again, if you're saying, why does your screen look different? You can have it in night mode day mode. It doesn't really matter. Navigraph uses Jeppesen charts. Jeppesen charts are a real world chart provider. But for obvious reasons, there is always the little warning. It's intended for flight simulation only, not for use in the real world, right? But it's the same crack again. Jeppesen kind of follow their own little system. So you can see airport elevation, the lat and the long, uh, what the ATIS frequencies are. Yeah, the same crack. The name, the date, April 22, effective until 21st of April. So I think in date, right? Effective until 21st. Uh, and then you have all your information here, including the runway lengths, the elevation, the bearing, the taxiway numbers, everything's there that you need. Additional runway information. Well, it talks about, well, there's ILSs. Uh, you can also see here where the control tower is, right? You can see where the weather socks are. They're important. So that's what the chart does. And then the bonus thing is you can actually superimpose your airplane. Your airplane will appear as a little icon on that as you move. Really, really handy, right? Um, so this is Navigraph. And you can look at the map. So this is Shannon area. And you can see the different classes of airspace. It's a class Charlie airspace, C. Yeah. And this restriction is in place uh, between two and a half thousand feet and 24 and a half thousand feet. We'll worry about all this a little bit later, right? But here is the airport here in all its glory. Now, I'm looking at a VFR map. Remember we spoke about some of the different uh, maps that are available for VFR. Well, on IFR, you can have your low en route. If you zoom out, it's going to show you all the low altitude airways or waypoints. Yeah. Or we can go to high. These are the high altitude. And there's rules between what's considered low and what's considered high. Depends on the aircraft, depends on the distance that you're flying, so on and so forth. All right. I keep it in VFR because, well, I love VFR flying. And you can change the layout of the map. You can easily put it onto just a world map and not have any chart overlays. And you can choose what it is you want to see because you have a ton of customizable options. You can say, hey, I don't want to see airspaces. I don't really care. And hey, I don't want to see airports. I don't really care. Or I only want to see them and disappear. See the yellow bits? They're built up areas or urban centers, cities. Yeah, I don't need to see them. You have loads of options here with this. 
Navigraph is brilliant, right? If you don't have it, I highly recommend it. It's about 10 euros a month or 12 euros a month. So even say it's 130 bucks a year for an entire year's subscription to Navigraph that will give you every bit of information related to charts and the weather for use, which are online flying. That's cheaper than one flight lesson in the real world. Just think on that. The price is going out for a couple of pints. Do you know what I mean? Highly, highly recommend this. Okay. This, uh, yes, Duster. Correct. Thank you, Duster. The subscription also includes the latest AirAC or AirAC data. That's basically your flight simulation navigation database, even though it uses... Who's the provider? Is it Meet Blue? One of them. Uh, Will Game, welcome aboard. It'll keep all your aircraft nav systems up to date. So your FMC or FMS or MacDoos are talking to the same navigational database. Otherwise, you'll, it'll come up on the screen nav data out of date. And at that stage, you don't have to do nothing else, only look at the camera or, you know, someone and say, ah, balls, right? Airac, Airac, right? Airac, Airac, right? Uh, but anyway, Navigraph, I'm telling you, it's worth it in every sense of the word. And if you want to look at America, for example, we can actually go, we have VF4, but they've included the sectionals, I think, didn't they? I thought they had sectionals here. No, it's the same thing though, right? So that's uh, Navigraph. It's brilliant. I love it. And I highly recommend you use it. Uh, another thing you can use if you wanted to is Volanta. Now, not necessarily for charts, but uh, when it comes to keeping an eye on traffic, what areas are being manned or staffed by VATSIM, uh, and even the rain, even the weather. Well, you can actually put this in, right? Turn on the weather. You can see where this precip or if you go satellite mode, it loads in a satellite mode. Why is this handy for charts? Well, if you go to the United States and you want to fly under VFR conditions, you can turn on the US sectional charts. You guys have seen this before with Sky Vector. It's the same thing. But this actually works with Volanta. Volanta is free. Yeah. So if your flying is always going to be in America under VFR conditions, well, here's all your VFR sectional charts. Well, all of them. Yeah. And you can use this as your map on Volanta. Really, really handy. The sectional charts for the US are excellent because there's a lot of detail in them. They're a little bit more difficult in Ireland. I have sectional charts here. So this is what a sectional, this is what an aeronautical chart, a sectional chart looks like for Ireland, right? In the real world. And it's, it's like this. Because there's not, there's not, this information, it's not really available in a digital platform without paying for it. The old uh, Ordnance Survey Office. But I would rather use what I have on the screen than use this. If I'm in the real world, I'll use this. Or I'll use, uh, what's it called? Uh, four flight or one of them. You know what I mean? Sky Vector is handy. This is, the same, uh, this is the same as Sky Vector with a slight difference. This will overlay traffic and yourself without thinking of much. And it'll show you what areas of VATSIM are up and running. All right? So Dallas Fort Worth. Uh, center is up and running 135.175 we can jump on there and have a listen to see what they're doing yeah so that's Volanta again it's free you can download it it runs there in the background it's super duper right so for when it comes to your charts you can use FS Hub you can use the local aviation authority website like the IAA or the British or the doesn't matter who uh, or you can use Chartfox but I highly highly recommend you use Navigraph that's just a genius app. It's brilliant. I love it. Okay. Now we're getting there. Access to weather. What do we need or why do we need to know about the weather? Well, we need to know what we're flying into because that's going to have an impact on our fuel burn, on the length of our flight, the runway direction in which we're going to take off. And even if it's possible to get our aircraft into a certain airport, we need to know what the weather is doing. Ventu Sky is one of my favorite ones. Have a look at that. Uh, VentuSky.com. Write that one down, right? Uh, if I go to wind speed, and we can put this into knots, and it, it's, you know, it's giving you live weather. It's like Windy. You know the Windy app? It's the same thing, but this is way more accurate, especially in Ireland. Uh, and it's, it's forecastable. You can find out what's happening, yeah? So we can see what's, what way the weather is going to be tracking. Mean speed or gust speed. So you can see, there's, isn't there a big storm or something to hit kind of Boston, neck of the woods? Cold temperatures is on the way. 
Yeah. So if we're looking at, okay, jump forward there a couple of days. See this cold pressure now coming down? Yeah. So if we move down, yeah, it's going to be like minus four, minus five. There's, there's bad L weather on the way. And we can kind of track this using this. So if you're planning a long range flight for the weekend, well, you can start getting an, an idea today, prevailing winds, and what's the weather going to be like? Wonderful. And it's all for free. This is free. And you can use Xbox pilots. You use this as well because you're using the in-sim weather. Yeah. Another way of getting the weather, well, you can use Sky Vector. Similar to what we've had a look with uh, in relation to Volanta. You can see all the charts and everything else. But you can turn on these little pins. You have a little world view for. And if you click on the layer, text weather, your METAR and TAF. So, for example, if you highlight over the pin, it's going to give you information. So the weather situation at Kilo Whiskey Niner Niner or Petersburg, uh, well, it's telling us that the winds are 1105 knots. Visibility is 10. It's raining. Scattered clouds at 3500. Scattered at 5500. Overcast. Okay. Overcast at 9000. Temperature 10, dew point 9. Altimeter 2957. Right. Hello there, Turks. Welcome in. Thank you very much indeed for the follow. Now, you might be saying, Murph, how did you read all of that information just by looking at a little line of code? Well, I'm going to show you how we understand a METAR, or how do we look up a METAR, right? A METAR, a METAR, right? So, if we want to have a look at a METAR, how are we going for time here? We're doing all right. Uh, check this out, right? We'll go to our famous website. Now, there are many ways to do this, but we're going to look at a METAR. We have a little section on our homepage on the twotonemurphy.com website. We have an electronic flight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah. We have <laughs> we have Ozzy Mandius for 12 months. Thank you very, very much indeed, my guy. Cheers. Ah, we have a little METAR look up here. So it's asking us, put in the ICAO Love code. That. Let's put in Shannon, right? Uh, Pro Sauce, you're welcome in. So I'm going to click Shannon and we're going to view the METAR. Don't worry about the charts. View the METAR. Click on that. It'll load up. I wait to see what happens here. Do you see what happens here? Uh, why didn't that come up as a code? Anyway, see. Oh yeah. E I N N two seven two two zero zero Z one two zero zero four K T. Like you're probably saying to yourself, "What in the name of Jemima?" Well, these are all actually fairly simple once you figure out how to interpret it. The start of it, E-I-N-N, -N, or Echo India, November, November. Well, that's Shannon. That's the ICAO code for Shannon. 2722. No, sorry. 272. Three digits. Is it? No, sorry. 27. You big Asian Murphy. See the 27. That number will change. That's telling us it's the 27th day. The time is 2200 Zulu. So it's accurate. This is from 10 minutes ago on the 27th. Yeah. 12004KT. That means the wind is coming in from a, a, a bearing of 120 degrees at four knots. So winds 120 at four knots. There's four knots of wind coming in from the southeast. Okay. 9999 means visibility is greater than 10 miles. Visibility is good. OVC means overcast. Now, don't worry about all these letters and what they mean. We'll be learning all about METAR soon and every single code that's there, right? 032 is giving us, it's overcast at 3,200. Next up is your temperature. It's 7 degrees Celsius and the dew point is 0. The M is for minus, but it's just zero. Temperature seven, dew point zero. Okay. The Q and H. In America, you'll have altimeter. Over here, you'll have uh, your Q and H. One is for inches of mercury. One is for uh, hectopascals, right? One, zero, three, six. And no sig means no significant change. Now, view charts for charts and a handy meter translator is here. Click on this. I wonder if this still work. It does. So meter decoder. Let's type it in. Let's type in Shannon into this decoder. But I don't want you to start with this. I want you to learn how to use it first. But anyway, this is where it breaks it down. Look. So from that one single line of code, yeah, the METAR, well, this is it in our language so we can understand it a bit. Yeah. So Shannon Airport, 
Time, 27 at 10 o'clock. Uh, start as VFR, four. Elevation, ground, pressure, density. Wind, direction 120. Speed is 4 knots or 5 miles an hour. Visibility is 6.21 statute miles or, you know, greater than 10 kilometers or 5.4 nautical miles. Temperature is 7 degrees Celsius or 45 Fahrenheit. Dew point 0 degrees Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit. Altimeter, it will be 30.59 in inches of mercury or 1036 hectopascals. Ceiling, 3200. Sky condition, overcast. Pretty cool, right? So it shows you how to do the thing. Decode it. And now if you're using Navigraph, that'll decode it as well, right? But Gibbo has all this linked up on our own website if you want to check it out there and just start looking at different METARs or TAF, Terminal Area Forecast. Start getting used to these because we're going to work on these, right? Right, that's that done. That's weather, METAR and TAF. Flight planning. We're not going to spend too much time here, but when it comes to flight planning, SIM brief. This is free. It's part of the whole Navigraph thing, but it's free. Um, and when it comes to flight planning, well, it's a very, very powerful tool. Say, for example, if we were going to depart Shannon, depart, and we're going to arrive down to Cork, right, and we're going to select an aircraft, which is a Cessna 172, it's going to load in an IFR flight plan for us, based on being a Cessna 172. It's not going to give us an altitude of, you know, 37,000 feet. We're in a Cessna, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah. AZ Blue Line, thank you very much indeed. Many thanks. Why is my bot gone? Where's the bot gone? Where's the bot gone? Bring the bot back. It was great crack. Uh, alert box and launch the bot. AZ Blue Line, uh, 15 months, dude. Thank you very, very much indeed. Cheers, man. 15 months. Ah, right. Now, so uh, moving on. Uh, this is going to show us what the flight plan looks like. And if you want to, uh, we can turn on weather. And we can actually get weather here. So we can see a precip weather report. Okay, that's fairly straightforward. And if we hit the play button, you can see what way the weather is going to move over the next number of hours. These are all new features of SimBrief. We can have a look at the winds aloft. We can have a look at the rain and what the clouds are doing. We can find out all this information. So you're actually getting your weather forecast during the flight planning stage. So we can put in our flight number or our airline. We're not an airline. We're going to put in our call sign. Echo India, Tango Tango Mike. Uh, no, it's not. Flight number, Echo India Tango, oh no, registration, beg your pardon, registration, Echo India Tango, Echo India Tango Tango Mike, ATC call sign, see the way I've typed it in, it now says what my ATC call sign is, Echo India Tango Tango Mike, all right, uh, and it's going to show us then what we're doing, so uh, flight time is going to be an hour and five minutes, and we have a flight plan, analyze the route, so we're going to do the Kuru 3 Alpha departure, and it's going to be the Kuru 1 Golf arrival. So Shannon to Cork by F4. Simples. Now, there's other information that we have here across the top. We can generate the flight. So if we click generate, or I can share the flight with you guys. So let's generate the flight. It'll process all of this, right? This is so cool, and this is free. We're going to generate this flight, but look what we can do here. So here's a summary. Our flight number is Echo India Tango Tango Mike, or a call sign. It's the same. We're departing Shannon. We're arriving in Cork. We're in a Cessna 172. Departure date and departure time. We're going to be roughly uh, 56 minutes in the air and our block time is going to take one hour and 24. Our initial altitude as per our flight plan is 3,000 feet. Okay. Cruise profile based on 2200 RPM. So we know it's based on the engine running at 22 or, uh, 2200 RPM. We're 96 miles. The average wind along the way is 118 at 9 knots. Uh, wind component is there. Deviation is there. Um and it tells you your air or your air ac cycle, uh, and then we can see your fuel burn, passenger count, empty weight, zero fuel weight, all that sort of jazz, right? Then it has other information here, so you can go into your briefing, you can go to your ATC plan, but more importantly, there's a button up here that says pre-file on network. Oh, this is handy. If you pre-file it on a network, you can actually go straight to VATSIM. If, I, if my head's in the way, you see VATSIM, IVAO, Pilot Edge, or POSCON. We're going to click on VATSIM. So let's pre-file this flight on VATSIM, just to give you an idea. Then it says VATSIM has found this flight plan. Call sign, are you IFR or VFR or IFR? Your aircraft, right? Transponder, that's already automatically done with the profile from SimBrief. And your route details and other details and remarks. It's in this little area, if we wanted to, 
we don't need to cast in brief. We can put in who you are or, you know, uh, first time pilot or new pilot or, you know, I often see Fabio will say streaming live on the Flying Fabio, whatever. You're just letting information go to the controller, your remarks. Then you have what we mentioned earlier on, voice rules. This is just for VATSIM, voice rules. Receive only, which means you have to text your instruction, but the controller will talk to you, or text only. You've no sounds. You can't speak. Text. We're going to leave it on voice, yeah? And then you click file your plan. Boom. Your flight plan is now filed. You're good to go. You've already filed it, yeah? So then when we start on the ground at Shannon, we'll tell them who we are. We are Echo India Tango Tango Mike. We'll have the ATIS that we've listened into or that we've read, yeah? And there's another option here as well. I want you to have a listen to. If well, You probably can't hear it on the screen. If you do something like this, this isn't great, but it's an option, right? It's an option. Um, if you go to the ATC rooms and go into charts or METAR, and if you join the ATC lounge, right? For example, Old Veteran Fallen Up, Maddie and Sir Fuzz are in there, and Six Knots. If I type in this, right, ATIS, ATIS Voice, Echo India, November, November. Wait and have a listen to this. You should hear it. Code 120 is 4 knots visibility, 10 kilometers temperature, 7 degrees Celsius. I know you can barely hear that, but don't worry. Point unknown, altimeter 1036, overcast layer at 3,000 uh, Wide one two zero at four knots visibility one zero kilometers temp. Okay, we'll try that again, right? So have a listen. Point unknown altimeter one zero three six overcast layer at three thousand two hundred feet. Winds one two zero. Now it's not winds, it's winds. Visibility one zero kilometers. But this is using our Discord to provide an audible ATIS for us. And this is free. You go into Discord, go into our charts meter and literally put in forward slash, because that's the that's the command, ATIS, and if ATIS voice or ATIS text. ATIS voice, and let's put in Dublin for the crack. Dublin. Enter. Winds 060 at 8 knots visibility, 10 kilometers right. temperature. Six so... The, the way for that to work, you just need to make sure you're in a voice channel and go into the charts meter channel. It's just a handy thing to do, but Xbox pilots can do that, right? Pretty awesome, right? So that's where you're going to get your ATIS. Your ATIS is going to be different uh, based on what VATSIM has. Remember, this ATIS is not giving you what information code it is. This will just give you an idea of what the weather is doing. Once you're on VATSIM, they have their own ATIS frequency working and they'll have the codes allocated. Information Bravo or information Alpha, whatever, right? Just be, make a point of that, right? So anyway, uh, flight planning, that's how it's done and everything's up and running there now, right? Now, the last bit we're going to have a little delve into now is our call signs because what I need you guys to do now is to choose a call sign, right? So we'll close off all these here now. And again, everything that I'm going through tonight, I'll have all of these available for you um, when we get into... Well, I'll, I'll put it all up there, right? Now, VATSIM. You can ask VATSIM about choosing a call sign. So if you're an ICAO registered airline, like a prefix, like Aer Lingus, E-I-N, or British Airways, B-A-W, or Delta, D-A-L, right? These are the letters. They're already done. Your grant. Your flight identification number is the one that changes. So if you want to fly Aer Lingus and you put in a number 235, well then you're Shamrock 235. That's what you'll be known as. Try and pick a call sign that's memorable to you, that it's easily remember, uh, or it's easy for you to remember it. Your date of birth, something like that. If you're going with general aviation, this is where the thing gets a little bit confusing. For the most part, and I mean like 95% of the time, general aviation call signs tend to be the aircraft registration number or the tail number. That's your call sign. Now, when I say 95% of the time, there are a few teeny tiny little reasons around that. But for the most part, your tail number is your aircraft registration number, which is going to be 
your call sign. Now, it's up to you what you want to pick. It's entirely up to you. But as Ailerons uses uh, Charlie Whiskey Tango Alpha Foxtrot, Tango Alpha Foxtrot, or give us as Echo Echo Juliet India Tango. Does Firefly Air have a call sign? Yes, it does. It is uh, Firefly Air, or just Firefly FFA is our code. Yes. Uh, so, a list of aircraft recognition or uh, registration numbers or registration prefixes. For example, if your air, if your aircraft in general aviation starts with C, Charlie, Dash, whatever, chances are it's Canadian. If it's Echo India, it's Irish. If it is November, it's North American, and so on. This link here on Wikipedia is the list. Oh, Peter oh, Chase, it's Arch NDA in the house. Another controller rambles in. Welcome in, Raiders. Happy Monday, guys. Hope you're all keeping very well indeed. Um, the list of aircraft registration prefixes, it's just a simple Google, and you'll find them here. And it just shows you which everyone is or what everyone is. Yeah? So you'll see the prefix or the country code of the aircraft registration. And again, if you're flying the airliners or whatever, uh, well, they're not going to fly by their tail number. They're going to have a call sign. Shamrock 235. Speedbird. 235. And you might be saying to me, Murphy, how do you know all these call signs? Well, if you go to a website called 123ATC.com, you'll go to this page. And if you click on the call sign tab, this will give you the call sign of, as far as I know, every single airline in the world. Emirates, for example, UAE, call sign Emirates. AAL, American Airlines, call sign American, right? Let's look for some funny ones. But British Airways, Speedbird, uh, the fans are straight, that's fairly. Blue Streak, look at this. JIA, PSA Airlines, their call sign, Blue Streak. Pretty cool, isn't it? 123ATC.com. Uh, some countries will have certain regs for certain aircraft types. Check Switzerland. Correct, Skep. It's actually the same in Ireland as well. But anyway, 123, sorry, yeah, 123ATC.com. Write that down in your notebook. Now, getting back to the list of aircraft registrations, as Skep has mentioned with Switzerland, um, the number might also be relevant to a type of aircraft. And it's the very same in Ireland, right? So, you'll see HB plus National Emblem, which is there, general pattern, HB dash AAA, or numbers, because they use them for gliders or motor gliders, right? Similarly enough, in Ireland, Ireland uses Echo India, EI. However, EJ is sometimes used for VIP or business aircraft. Bet you didn't know that. So, they are very, very similar. They're very, very similar. So a quick look here at the OWL Irish Aviation Authority's registration book of who owns what plane in Ireland. You can actually have a look at some of the real world registration numbers. And again, you'll see it's the EI prefix for Ireland followed by three letters. It's just three letters. EI followed by three letters. Now, you don't have to do it this way. You could use EE, you could use or or. it's up to you. But by and large, this is usually what you want to be doing with ATC. You want to keep it as close to the real world. So, for example, you see Echo India Delta Whiskey Sierra. That's a Boeing 737 owned by Ryanair. Eh, interesting. However, if we want to look for the EJ, here's some here. So, Echo Juliet, Foxtrot Lima Charlie Bravo, or ELFLCB. It's a Bombardier uh, Jesus, what's that? A BD700, lads. Any idea what that is? Or a BR700? Uh, it's owned by ACAS Ireland Limited and it's based in Shannon. Or a Textron Aviation BAE125. Uh, or a Gulfstream G5. Right? It's, it's cool, this stuff. It's cool. But what I want you to do now, I want you all to pick your own call sign. Write it down. You can change it later if you're not too happy, but write it down. You need a call sign. My call sign is Echo India Tango Tango Mike. If I wanted an aircraft registered in Ireland. Now, I tend to fly online with November 235 Romeo Mike because I tend to do most of my flying in America. November for America, 235 is the date of birth, 23rd day of the fifth month, 
Romeo Mike, in my initials, Robin Murphy. November 235 Romeo Mike. I know it. I'll hear it a mile away. And I know once I hear that, they're talking to me and me alone. If you pick a call sign that you're not familiar with and it's called out on the frequency, it's not going to attract your attention straight away, right? So just remember that, right? So what we're going to do now, now that you guys have picked out a call sign, right? We're now going to test. We're going to test. I want you guys now to test the audio settings. Jump on into Discord. Jump into the ATC Lounge channel. Make sure your audio is working, right? And then when you're ready, come on in to Shannon Ground, which is 121 decimal 8. And when you jump in there, I'm going to act as the controller. What I want you to do is to follow the little script that I've published in our document. It's on page 13. Now, all you need to do here, where it has pilot, that's you, Shannon Ground, you'll be saying that, just change your call sign. Don't use Echo India Tango Tango Mike. Don't use that one. I want you to use your own one. We're going to talk through it. You start off by saying the facility name, Shannon Ground. This is followed by your call sign. That's where you start. Now, some people are going to say, Murph, you don't even have to do that. You can just call up the ground and say radio check straight away. You can. But again, we're going with the book. This is what the book says. Here's the book. If someone has a bigger or nicer or newer book, let me know. We're going with the book. It's not wrong information. It's by the book. So what's going to happen? ATC will reply to you, hopefully. They will address you by your call sign. Followed. Hello, hello there. Followed with identifying who they are. Shannon Ground. And then they're going to give you an instruction. In this case, you're going to say Shannon Ground, whatever your call sign is. ATC will say your call sign. This is Shannon Ground. Pass your message. What do you want? Right? You then say your call sign, radio check, and you call out the frequency. 121 decimal 8. In America, you say point. In, the, in Europe, you say decimal. Hello there. Hello there. All right, folks. So, are you all familiar with what we're doing here? Page Please 13 of uh, the document. If you need to do mic checks, this is the place to do it. Gibbo, you sound so dreamy. Right, we'll mute Gibbo there for the second, right? Um, so, Gibbo's in there now already. So, we've lots of people, right? And right, don't worry about messing this up. Just read the sheet. And our objective here is get you connected. Get you talking for the first time to air traffic control. It'll be grand. Nothing bad will happen, I promise. Open this on page eight, uh, 13, and this is what we're going to do. All right? So we're going to find a victim. I'm now going to jump into Shannon Ground, and uh, we're going to see what happens here. And I need, I've got to, I don't know, I need to open up a Word document because I want to type in all the different call signs. This could be fun. Please don't make a fool out of me. <laughs> this could be hilarious. Right? So, are we ready? It's all about the 99% of radio checks are unnecessary, at least on VATSIM. Yeah, 100%. But the idea is we got to start somewhere. This is, this. forget about what we're doing. This is literally pressing that button and going, holy crap, I have to speak. And someone's going to speak back to me. Should be fun, right? Should be fun. Uh, Castle Gaming, where do we get this book? Uh, it's, it's just a document I prepared. It's over on our Discord. Exclamation point, Discord. Uh, and you'll get it in there. Right, friends. So I'm going to jump into Shannon Ground. Now, bear with me, right? So when I'm in here, on Shannon Ground, I'm going to put out a call to all stations, let them know that the facility is active, and then we'll wait for people to jump in. If you're in the channel, rule number one, before you start talking on ATC, you wait. Listen, there could be someone already having a conversation. There's nothing worse than butting in on another transmission. So you listen first. If it's busy, Give it a couple of seconds. Wait five or six seconds. Make sure there is no one else talking. Then you push your button and then you send your message. Fair enough. So don't all jump in together. If someone starts talking, you jump off. All right? Okay. Let's do the button and see what happens. Uh, right. This could be fun now. Hang on. See if it works, right? 
Are you nervous? I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. All stations, this is Shannon Ground. The frequency is open. Now we wait. Is someone going to talk back to us? I have buttons all over the place, look. So much a bond there and hop in. Shannon Ground, Echo India, Charlie, Papa Mike. Echo India, Papa Charlie Mike, Shannon Ground, send message. Echo India, Charlie, Papa Mike, radio check. Echo India, Charlie, Papa Mike, readability five. Readability of four. Readability five. Yeah, go into your Charlie Papa Mike. Great success. There's the first one. It worked. That was six knots. Ah, he's a legend. It worked, lads. Right, let's have a listen. Come on, someone else, give it a go. Don't be afraid. Who's next? I got it wrong, yeah. Shannon Ground. Need to know who it is. Hello there. Don't forget your call sign. So if you're saying Shannon Ground, just tell them your call sign. Give it a sec. Try it again. Shannon Ground, Golf, Bravo, Zulu, India, Oscar, request radio check. What was his code? Golf, Bravo, India, Oscar, was it? Zulu. Right, we'll go with that. India, Oscar. <laughs> Waiting to hear this. This is very professional. Golf Bravo Zulu, India Oscar, Shannon Ground, send message. Golf Bravo Zulu, India Oscar, request radio check. Golf Bravo Zulu, India Oscar, readability five. Readability five. Golf Bravo Zulu, India Oscar. We got there in the end. I'd be shite as an ATC, wouldn't I? <laughs> God almighty. Here, everyone in the chat, write down these codes, will you? <laughs> right, who's next? I need to get good at this. <laughs> who's in charge? Oscar Echo. Oscar Whiskey. Charlie Whiskey. Asking for a radio check. That's brilliant. Oscar... Echo, Oscar, Whiskey, Charlie, Hotel, Readability 5. Does that say ouchie? Copy it, Oscar, Echo, Oscar, Whiskey, Charlie, Whiskey. <laughs> Brilliant. I know that voice. Shin and Ground, November 8-9, Whiskey, Tango, Foxtrot. November 8, 9, Whiskey, Tango, Foxtrot, Shannon, Ground. Send message. Shannon, Ground, radio check. 8, 9, Whiskey, Tango, Foxtrot. November 8, 9, or Whiskey, Tango, Foxtrot, readability 5. Readability 5, copy that. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You can also say station calling, say again. I have a get to that. Shannon Ground, NKR 54. Uh, last aircraft calling, say again. Shannon Ground, NKR 54. NKR 54, November Kilo Romeo 54. Send message.
NKR54, Shannon Ground, Radio Check 121.8. Remember Kilo Romeo 54, Readability 5. NKR54, Readability 5. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, here's the thing. See the way he went NKR. So NKR is... Ground, Echo Nia, Charlie, Mike Tango. Echo India, Charlie, Mike Tango, Shannon Ground, send message. Echo India, Charlie, Mike Tango, radio check. Echo India, Charlie, Mike Tango, readability five. Readability five also, Echo India, Charlie, Mike Tango. Jeez, that was brilliant, wasn't it? No messing there, lads. <laughs> Scap, how do you do this? And more importantly, Squawk Mode Charlie, how do you do this? This is terrifying on my side. It was great on your side. Uh, now, let's have a listen. Just going back to the NKR54, the importance of calling that out phonetically. November Kilo Romeo. That's the way it, it would sound, right? Uh, NKR. NKR sounds like it could be an airline code, for instance, right? Or it could be uh, an ICAO code that's recognised, right? But so far, so good. We're doing well. Jump on, lads. This is a good old crack. Some of the names. <laughs> Ouchie. WTF. <laughs> you guys. Right, who's next? Shannon Ground, November 812, Charlie. November 812, Charlie. Shannon Ground, pass message. Shannon Ground, November 812, Charlie. Radio check, 121.8. November 812, Charlie, readability 5. November 812, Charlie, readability 5. Thank you. All right. Brilliant. Right, we're getting there. This is great crack. Murph, what if I call it a mayday? I'll pull down me jocks, Maddie, <laughs> and jump out that window. That's it, man. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> we're just doing freaking radio checks now, right? So calm it down, right? <laughs> Bit of crack though, wasn't it? Shannon Ground, Sierra Echo Golf Tango Foxtrot. Sierra Echo Tango Golf Foxtrot, Shannon Ground. Pass message. Sierra Echo Golf Tango Foxtrot, radio check 121 decimal 8. Sierra Echo Golf Tango Foxtrot, readability 5. Readability 5, Serial Echo, Golf Tango, Foxtrot. Very good. I'm crap at writing this down. I'm trying to do 10 things at once. Just bear with me, right? I could. I need to, like, wedge a pencil Shannon in between my toes. Golf Echo, Echo, Delta, Delta, Echo, request video check. Uh, last aircraft calling station, um, say again. Shannon Ground, Golf Echo, Delta, Delta, Echo, request radio check. Golf Echo, Delta, Delta, Echo, Shannon Ground, readability five. Golf Echo, Delta, Delta, Echo, readability five. Love the accent there. Is that proper, Jody? Like, that was brilliant, wasn't it? Ah, brilliant! Right, who's next? Looks like I picked the wrong week to stop whatever I was doing. As <sighs> are doing well on this. They are. And like, this is the huge thing, right? This is new to a lot of people. They may not have done this before. The whole point here is get ourselves used to it. Get ourselves used to talking. And it's only us. It's only me. It's only me here. Do you know what I mean? I matter getting things wrong before you did. Do you know what I mean? Grand lads, right? I'm gonna have these friggin' call signs in me dreams tonight as night. Seven rounds. You can go for Echo Echo Kilo and Yankee with information Bravo. What question are you gonna stop? Last aircraft calling service. Uh, airport currently closed to operations. Standing ground. You come back and say something smart, but actually. Also, readability too. <laughs> <laughs> he 
He'd be like, yeah, what? Shannon Graham student golf, I thought Kiri Yankee uh, some firm. Airport closed and request engine start as batteries running low. Uh, last aircraft calling Shannon Ground. Can you confirm your call sign, please? Call sign is a Golf Echo Echo Kilo Yankee student pilot. And Golf Echo Echo Kilo Yankee Shannon Ground. Uh, permission for pushback approved. Uh, contact ground when ready to taxi. Standing ground, student golf, I feel like you're again. Can we just need to start? We're uh, not ready for pushback yet. Ah, Jesus. Breaking me, Pop. <clears throat> uh, golf, Echo, Echo, Kilo, Yankee. Start up approved. Contact ground when ready for taxi. Or pushback. Or battery. Go for a couple of Yankees. Start approved, Wilco. <laughs> Ailerons, there's names here I can invent for you, but I couldn't use them on the, you know, they start like this. <laughs> I can't see it. I have no scope or nothing. I'm just going by voice. It could be anywhere. Uh, Amundo says, Murph, should you not start with your call sign only when calling up the controller? Then after confirming your message with your call sign. No, you start with your, um, you start the conversation saying the facility name and that's followed immediately by your call sign. Then the controller knows who to speak to. You know what I mean? Uh, we stay on battery forever, boss. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, ailerons. I bet you give up a joke to that. Um, you always need to say your call sign, plus read back any instruction and clearances. The only time you can just uh, use your call sign is to acknowledge it when you are given mere information. There you go. Thanks, Skep. How are we all getting on? Are we, are we doing all right? I think someone else is going to jump on now. We'll see, right? Don't be afraid to log on. No. Standing ground, Alpha, Indio, Romeo, Lima, Oscar, Charlie, Kilo. Alpha India, Romeo, Lima, Oscar, Charlie, Kilo, Shannon Ground, pass message. Shannon Ground, Alpha India, Romeo, Lima, Oscar, Charlie, Kilo, radio check. Alpha India, Romeo, Lima, Oscar, Charlie, Kilo, readability, five. Echo India Sierra and Mike radio check. Echo India Sierra Mike Shannon Ground readability four. Sierra in the mic, radio check. Echo India Sierra mic, Shannon ground. Readability four. Turn up the volume. We'll try it again. Shannon ground. This is Sierra India Mike Radio Check. Echo Sierra India Mike Shannon Ground Readability Five. He should have got that. We hope he got it. Infidel Fireman is here. Good to see you. Soaring AJ needs some guidance on the mic setup. Yeah, no worries. If anyone's stuck, just shout in the chat if there's something that we need to look at, yeah? So I imagine that was Echo India, Sierra India Mike. So far, so good, right? 
Uh, mods, hey, BZ, good to see you. What's happening? BZ, jump at the old voice chat. We're doing ATC stuff. Sound like Shannon a Shannon Ground, this is Uniform Romeo Mike Alpha with you. <laughs> oh, no, he's after getting me. Uniform Romeo Mike Alpha, Shannon Ground, and also with you. Pass message. Oh, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say your ma has a call sign? <laughs> dear. Oh, dear. Uh, what? Okay. Uh, yeah, Uniform Romeo, Mike Alpha, uh, radio check, and with you again. <laughs> Uniform Romeo, Mike Alpha, readability five. <laughs> Readability, also a five. Uh, uniform Romeo, Mike Alpha, Roger Dodger, over and out. That's hilarious. So, you know this, Crack, I have these pet hates. Never say with you. What do you mean with you? I'm with you. What? what are, you, are you against me? Don't say with you. We'll learn about this later on. But don't say with you. And he used the call sign, your ma. <laughs> Jesus. Tough crowd tonight. Ah, oh, trust Givo brought us down to a new level, so he did. <laughs> Pints and Guinness into the chat. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> that was excellent. You have to have a bit of crack as well, though. Do you know what I mean? Right, how are we getting on? Anyone else? Have a look and read the screed, as it were, right? On our little, uh, on this note. Shannon Ground... Put in your call sign here, yeah. Uh, you start off by saying the facility name. This is followed by your call sign. And then we go, the ATC will then reply to you, pass your message. The controller will respond by addressing you by your call sign, followed by identifying who they are, Shannon Ground, and then the instruction. So you then go back and say your call sign, radio check, and you give them the frequency just to make sure. Yeah, you have to you have to call out the frequency, one to one decimal eight. Next, you repeat your call sign, followed by radio check, and also include the frequency that you're tuned and transmitting on, which will sound as one two one decimal eight. That's how you get the pronunciation. Yeah. ATC will respond with your call sign, followed by the readability score. In this case, it's five, which sounds as five. The pilot responds saying readability five also, with your call sign. That Standing one. Ground, November Hotel Kilo two three. Jesus, lads, we're up. Uh, November Hotel, Kilo 23, Shannon Ground, pass message. November Hotel, Kilo 23, radio check 121.8. November Hotel, Kilo 23, readability 5. Readability 5 also. November Hotel, Kilo 23. Have a good day. You too. Super smooth. That was good, lads, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, BZ, is that working? Oh, you have a phonetic alphabet on the wall in front of you. Awesome. Awesome. Like, just to give you an idea, like, you can see, and it's only me here sitting trying to listen. And, you know, you have to, you know, you have to train your brain what you're listening to. But it's, it's a huge testament to controllers. This is the most basic form. It's a radio check, right? But if you were a controller, you could have been speaking to five, six, seven, twenty other aircraft, other call signs. You're tracking their movements. You're watching the clock. And you've got to be able to respond to all of this. These anyone who can do controlling on any level, they are highly gifted and talented people. They just are. They'll spend years learning. It's a, you know, it's it's they have skills that can be developed, right? But they also have kind of natural skills, multitasking skills. That us mere mortals don't possess. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Well, it's amazing. It really is amazing. That was your first time too. Castle Gaming. Do, uh, excellent. Brilliant. Friggin' marvellous. Well done. Well done. Right, so we've got a couple of more minutes left. Anyone else wants to give this a shot? Uh, again, our whole idea here, we're trying to break... <laughs> I'm back in the will. Go on, Skep! <laughs> we're trying to break this mic fright. 
don't worry if you make a mistake. It's totally fine. We're Alpha Romeo Mike India November. That was a little bit low. But let's see if I can do that on this side. Alpha Romeo Mike India November. Shannon Ground. Pass message. Alpha Romeo Mike India November. Requesting radio check. 121.8. Alpha Romeo Mike, India November, readability 4. Readability 4, Alpha Romeo Mike, India November, good night. Good night, and just while I have you, if you, if you can, maybe try increase your volume. It could be a Discord setting, or it could be in your main settings. It's clear, it's just a little low. I got you, I'll check on that setting, thank you. Brilliant, lads. I might change my call sign to no Skoda. Get out of that garden, B. Carlo. Who asked you? <laughs> November Oscar. <laughs> no Skoda. No bueno. But anyway, the idea here is let's try and break the ice a little bit. We'll spend more time on this during the Shannon week. Shannon Ground, radio check. Shannon Ground, radio check. Aircraft calling station, please identify. Echo India Sierra India Mike. Echo India Sierra India Mike Shannon Ground. Pass message. Sierra India Mike five. Sierra India Mike readability also five. Good stuff. Don't worry if you get things wrong. This is what we're here for. So that's what I'm saying. So if you hear someone make a mistake, don't laugh at them. If you make a mistake, don't cry about it. It's fine. You're going to make mistakes. When I fly on Vatsim, I make mistakes all the time. I come up and like, I come out with sentences that are like, what? What are you talking about? You know what I mean? Um, but don't worry about it. It's practice. And it's like the famous saying, people say practice makes perfect. It doesn't. Practice makes permanent. The more you do it, the easier it becomes, and you, it just becomes a part of what it is you do. You know what I mean? So, just like on a stream, right? Just like on the <laughs> Mr. Two Tons call sign, November uh, Whiskey Kilo Tango uh, Charlie Hotel November, new kitchen. <laughs> Brilliant. Sai Murray, uh, by the way, that was Sai there. Uh, good job, Sai. We heard you loud and clear. And again, it's just getting used to the voice procedure, but it's written down here for you guys. Just read over this. Next week, I'm going to be adding more sections to this book, to this little thing that we have, right? Because next week, we're going to go on uh, and chat about the charts a little bit in more detail, right? What what are these SIDs? What are these stars? We're going to do a little bit around of... Delta Echo, Golf, Romeo, Foxtrot. Last aircraft calling Shannon, please confirm call sign. Shannon Ground, Delta, Echo, Golf, Romeo, Foxtrot. Delta, Echo, Golf, Romeo, Foxtrot, Shannon Ground, pass message. Delta, Echo, Golf, Romeo, Foxtrot, radio check, one to one decimal eight. Delta, Echo, Golf, Romeo, Foxtrot, readability five. Readability 5, Delta Echo, Golf, Romeo, Foxtrot. Perfect. Perfect. Excellent job. Brilliant. Wasn't that good, wasn't it? It was brilliant. And uh, that's what I heard too. What's Keen Lafford saying? What did he do? What did he do? Um, lads, we're actually getting a good 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 already. This is great. This is brilliant, right? It's brilliant. Considering... Folks may not have spoken online before or even, you know, on this. You know what I mean? Hey, Toto, good to see you. Uh, go over to the Discord page, Toto. Uh, that's where it's all kind of doing its thing, right? That's where it's doing its thing. Um, but have a look at the whole thing. More sessions. What did I say? More sections. More se <laughs> behave. More sessions. Sessions, right? Uh, we will be doing more of these. And it, it's every Monday night. We have to start somewhere. 
So for those uh, who are, you know, at a, at a, at a much more advanced stage, uh, well, thanks for bearing with us. You remember when you got to learn at the start, right? Uh, and any advice or any support you guys can offer, if anyone wants to jump into a tower frequency and help us out, just let me know. I'd be only delighted uh, for any support you guys can offer because you can see it, there's a bit to do, you know. But uh, have a read over that script. So your homework for this week now. Are you ready now? Your homework. Get on to that, Sim. Shannon Graham, Charlie Alpha Tango, Bravo Alpha Tango. I know that voice. Hang on. Charlie Alpha Tango, Bravo Alpha Tango, Shannon Ground, pass message. Yeah, Charlie Alpha Tango, Bravo Alpha Tango, radio check, please. Charlie Alpha Tango, Bravo Alpha Tango, readability three. Uh, however, I will request repeat uh, radio check because I think I fixed it. Roger, uh, Charlie Alpha Tango, Bravo Alpha Tango, I uh, request radio check. Bravo Alpha Tango, readability 5. Uh, radio 5 also, thank you. Cat, bat, cat. Ah, brilliant! This is fantastic, crack. Right. Filthy says, this is a great Murph. I listened the whole way home from work. Wish I could join in. Nothing's wrong. Shannon Ground, Speedbird, 6-4 mic. Curveball. Speedbird 64 Mike Shannon Ground. Pass message. Speedbird 64 Mike requests a radio check. Speedbird 64 Mike. Readability 5. Readability 5 also. Speedbird 64 Mike. Nice. That was deadly, wasn't it? He even threw us in there with the Speedbird. Uh, I can only add helicopter prior to ID. Uh, so Tara knows they can route you in. Oh yeah, you can add helicopter. Yeah, helicopter one one six or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you can add choppers. Absolutely. So if you're Captain Graham, this is Thompson two two six three requesting radio check. Thompson two two six three Shannon Brown readability five. Uh, Roger readability five. This is. Thompson's 22638. There you go. Right. So, like, the voice procedure is there. People who've been doing this for a long time. So, we're listening to people now giving us airline uh, call signs, which is an indication to me they've done this before. But if you follow the document or if you follow this thing, this is like, this is the elementary school part of it. This is the entry level point. If you, you know, if you follow this, you can't go wrong. And in time, as I said, it's just like, you know, when you learn to drive, you know, for the first, for your driving lesson, you got to drive with like, you know, the 10 to 2 position, right? Two hands on the wheel, feed the wheel. Within a week, you're eating a cheeseburger and it's a one hand drive, arm out the window, you know, looking at ones, Jesus, how are you, right? You have to kind of get through the whole learn at the beginning and then you kind of move on from there. You know what I mean? Familiar voice there. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? No Ryanair radio check. Empire. and uh, uh, Right. And we in Shannon as well. God almighty. But anyone now for the rest of the week, if anyone's stuck or if anyone wants more help with this, um, these ATC rooms are open. So anyone who has experience or anyone who wants to act as the controller and someone wants to come into practice, even if it's just with your buddy, if you know someone else online, say, hey, can I practice this? Let's jump into this, into these voice channels. Or you might find someone else are going to be in these voice channels. Work away. We have all these voice channels available on our Discord. Um, and if you want to use them, well, that's what they're there for, right? So we can see that we have ground. Don't worry about tower or support unless you need it. But definitely with the ground, if you want to jump in there, yeah. And one person acts as ATC as ground control, uh, and everyone else can just practice with that person. Uh, there's no restrictions. Anyone can join these channels. If there's any messing, the mods will get in there and kick Maximus Asius Siriusus. Uh, but they're, they're there for you guys to practice, have a bit of fun with it, and just start building up a bit of experience. The easiest thing in the world, after you've done it, is a radio check. It, it can be hard to do it 
prior to that. But once you do it, and once you've done it, things will get... Shannon Ground echoes Sierra in the mic. Can we do a test flight? Sierra, uh, mic. He's eager. Uh, Sierra India Mike, test flight not scheduled for this week because uh, I don't have any sort of radar and my sim isn't loaded in. Uh, but uh, you can, of course, fly in the vicinity. They just don't have tower uh, open tonight. Oh, yeah, right. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll work on things now. Let me see. Discord. There you go. There's a Discord. So you, you find out everything in there. Um, so as I said, have uh, have a read of the document. Do the VATS in Cannon Ground, November two three eight, Victor Zulu. November two three eight, Victor Zulu, Shannon Ground, pass message. November two three eight, Victor Zulu, radio check one two one point eight. November two three eight, Victor Zulu, readability five. Readability 5 also. November 238, Victor Zoo. That was really good, wasn't it? But that's how it's done. You just practice, right? So I'll leave that with you. I'll leave the whole Discord thing there with you. These channels are up and running. Remember, you can go into the ATC text. Use that as your text channel and ask the questions. The ATC course is where I publish all the updates to our document that we're working off. This is all free. This is all free. Uh... Someone join up and ask for a 234 Romeo Mike. That's like saying 006. Get out of that garden, Matty. Uh, then you have the charts meter. This is where you can ask the bot. So if you were to put in a slash Hello? command, ATIS, ATIS, uh, I don't want voice, so ATIS text, ATIS text, E I N N, the bot will go off and say wins 1304 knots, visibility. It'll give you the ATIS in a text, right? Uh, many thanks for the following. Dinosaur, welcome in, welcome in. Um, but all this is available for you. Also, guys, uh, for this uh, thingy, the jiggy, where is it? Where did I hide it? Uh, the, the IF4 checklist, this thing, right? Uh, does an audio ATIS as well, uh, Skipper Jeff, yes. So if you put in slash command ATIS, voice, E-I-N-N, -N, and enter, that'll then play in the audio channel you hear it now listen winds one three zero at four knots visibility one zero kilometers temperature six degrees it's pretty cool but you have to be in a voice channel for it to work okay so uh if you want this for free i was selling this because well i'm a glutton for punishment uh exclamation point checklist it's available for any anyone anyone here doing this course that's available for you right so have a ramble exclamation point checklist uh, and then you can jump in all right so looking forward to next week what are we doing next week well next week we are going to have a look at circuit flying it's going to be a practice lesson we're going to learn about the ground school taxiing and flying circuits. That's our mission, right? Uh, and I, I have a lot of work to do preparing these lessons, but it'll give you an idea. Uh, this sort of crack is what we're going to be doing. Circuit work. But we need to do so in such a way that we're able to use a bit of ATC. So let's see how the pace goes. I would like to start off and just do taxiway instructions. Taxi to here and then taxi to there. Because there's a, there's a couple of rules we need to learn about basic taxiing. What lights do I need on? What speed do I need to move? Should I deploy the flaps? What happens if I have an emergency? What happens if the sim crashes and I'm on a network? We've quite a bit of, quite a bit of ground to cover just when it comes to taxiing and identifying, well, where are we supposed to be going, right? Uh, and then progressing on from that we'll have a look at pattern work, flying in a circuit. So you'll be flying at the airport, you take off, and Control Tower, for example, uh, will tell you, contact me when on the down lane, uh, or report when on down uh, wind, or report when on short base, or whatever, or on base leg. We'll go through all of this. Any controllers who are available that evening, uh, we're aiming for next Monday. If you're available, uh, just let me know on Discord. Uh, I, I, I would appreciate it if you're around. If you're not, don't worry, I'll, I'll do a thing. 
Um, but this is where we've progressed from a basic radio check to getting, uh, to requesting uh, some sort of a clearance, to getting back an answer, doing the thing in the sim with the aeroplane, and then putting it all together, right? And as I said, we have all of this week, all of this week, to be practiced using these voice channels. I'll keep an eye on them as well. If I see that there's people interested in using them, read the script. That's all you need to do. If there's two people there, one person reads the script uh, and the other person reads the pilot. One person covers the green, the other the blue. And if you do that, it'll all work or should all hopefully work. Okay. So there we shall leave it. That is the hour of the day. I want to thank you all so very, very much indeed for joining me. Um, I hope you learned something or at the very least, I hope you enjoyed uh, what we cover tonight. There was a lot of theory as in chatting about things, right? But as the course progresses, we'll start putting a lot of these things that we're learning into practice whilst flying the aeroplane, right? Um, and again, to make life easy on everyone, I'm probably going to stick with the Cessna 172. It could be the steam gauge or the G1000. It doesn't really matter. But we want to pick an aircraft that everyone has and we're familiar with it because we want to know where all the buttons are. How do you do this? How do you do that? What speed? Does it have an autopilot? Yeah. Let the plane fly itself. You focus on the radios. This sort of stuff. All right. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it, lads. I need to lie down now. Your support, as always, has been absolutely incredible. I hope you like the old voice transitions. I hope you like the new alerts. I probably need to change that. And, uh, well, for your patience as well. Thank you very, very much indeed. And uh, let me know. We'll, we'll start off next week. We'll do a little bit of a recap. If you're struggling at any stage during this entire course, make it known. Drop me a DM. If you don't want to talk to the general public, just drop me a message and say, Murph, I'm struggling here. Leave it with me. I'll devise a wonderful plan to address it. It could be one-on-one. -on -one. We could organise a, a weekend group thing um, or I can add more into it the following week. There's no time limit. There's no pressure on us. It's up to us. We go at our pace. And by our pace, I mean we go by your pace. And I'm going to be learning too. And I'm liable to break things. So be grand, right? It'll be totally fine. Right, that's the story. I'm away Shin now. Shannon Ground, 8-9, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Ah, Jesus, one for the road. Hang on. Eight, nine, whiskey, tango, foxtrot. Is that what he said, was it? There's always one. Was it November? Uh, eight, nine, whiskey, tango, foxtrot, Shannon Ground. Is that a message? Can you confirm snacks or divorce? Uh, November 8, 9, Whiskey Tango, Foxtrot. Uh, the ordivores are no longer good. The uh, catering has now closed. Uh, please contact uh, Shannon Customer Care <laughs> at Gibbo's Gaff. <laughs> Copy that. Thank you, Foxtrot. Oh, it's Alvin. Thanks very much. <laughs> Gibbo, something happened to your voice there. Gibbo just came across as one of them. Right, I'm going now before it gets out of hand. Thank you all so very much. I love you. These are brilliant. And uh, we'll see you on Wednesday for all the week's flight simulator news, including we're going to check ride this AN225, see what it's all about. Until then, see you soon.